to a taste that's attracted millions of loyal fans. Because after 30 years, we've changed our recipe. Say hello to a crisper, brighter, still carbon neutral, and can we say better? We may put up the frame, the bricks, and the windows, but you bring the book of the one. We may pay the paths, create the Online 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1.
The track cycling action through the first few nights has been intense. And here in Milton, Ontario, Canada, there is still one more night to go. Competition comes to an end in the final leg of the 2023 TSO UCI Track Nations Cup. The Mattamy National Cycling Centre is the host venue as racers and teams ramp up preparations for this summer's World Championships in Glasgow, Scotland. Hi everybody, my name is Gavin Day, guiding you through the final evening of competition here in Milton. We are just about to get ready for the first action of the evening. Not gonna waste any time getting right down to it. And if you joined us yesterday, it's essentially the same program, just flipping men with women. And we are going to lead things off with a lovely shot inside the Madame National Cycling Center. And you see riders forming up along the start line. It is race one of the Women's Omnium, the grueling four nights, four night, four event series of races. And there is a look at the track. It took a bit of a beating last night with plenty of crashes, particularly in the Women's Madison race, 250 meters, untreated Siberian spruce, and some of that surface could have ended up in one or two of the riders who uh, had a few injuries to deal with overnight. Some of the riders warming up. Very, very stacked field here in the Women's Omnium. We have the European champion from earlier this year in Grenken, Switzerland. That's Katie Archibald. We have the world champion as well, Jennifer Valente of the United States. There is the schedule. Women's Omnium, men's sprints, women's Kieran, men's Madison. Scattered throughout the night. We'll go and come back to events as it progresses. And as always, we end with a few medals to be given out. Very, very strong field in this women's omnium. We have the gold, silver, and bronze medal winners from last year's world championships. That's Jennifer Valente of the United States, the Netherlands, Micah van der Duin, and Maria Martins of Portugal. As I mentioned, Katie Archibald of Great Britain. So lots of people to keep an eye on in this race. They're formed up. The whistle goes, and they will do one lap to get into position. And then the gun will go, and we will be underway. First of four events in the Women's Omnium. 7.5 kilometer scratch race. And unlike the other ones where there are points and then there are sprint points. This race is about as straightforward as it gets. Be the first one over the line. And the gun goes and we are off. And, but as always, there is sort of a strategic game you have to play here. Do you want to go on an attack knowing full well it doesn't really lead to anything? If you lap the field, you don't get any bonus points. You don't get any extra points. And with three other races still to come, You've just wasted a lot of energy on what is a very, very long night. 24 riders in this field. They competed in a points race this morning. There were two races. The top 12 riders from each of those races qualify for the Omnium. And after the scratch race, we have the tempo race the ever popular elimination race, and then finishing off with the points race. And last night in the men's Omnium, the points race, the results going in were far different from how they ended up with Frenchman Donovan Condain coming away as the Omnium winner. So, all kinds of things to play for tonight. Of course, the benefit, if you do gain a lap, you can sit quite comfortably and force everyone to work and try to get back on terms with you. We saw last night Alan Banaszak of Poland. He went on an attack very early, quickly made up that lap, and then got to conserve a little bit of his energy. So various permutations, a lot to think about when you're in this race. And that is Anita Stenberg of Norway just pulling off the front. There's a look at Jennifer Valente, who has some, some tape on the knee. And she has that Omnium World Champions kit on. 
Last night, she did a number on her U.S. kit in the Madison going down a pretty hard crash. They were doing an arm sling, and one of the riders came up from behind and just clattered into the back of them. Valente, tough as it comes, back out today. The 28-year-old from San Diego. And then you can't discount the woman in blue at the front. 2021 World Road Race Champion, Elisa Balsamo from Italy. So even without the likes of Ali Wollaston and Clara Capone, who aren't here, Emily Dierksen, it still is an elite, elite top, top field here tonight. There's Lana Kopecki. Another name we can't be remiss to mention. Won the Madison last night. World Madison champion. Absolute oh, star Mr. on the road. So if you're handicapping this event, good luck to you. Coming up to 20 laps remaining. And an injection of pace by Katie Archibald. She's trying her luck to break off the front. The riders were peeling off at the same time, and she might have caught them napping a little bit, but one thing Archibald is doing, he's testing some of the riders to try to stay with her. She has three who have joined her. Now it comes back together. So an early jump forward. There's Aline Seitz of Switzerland, who also tried to join that breakaway. 26-year-old who races on the road, also races mountain bikes. There's Archibald right there. Very, very well decorated athlete. Team Pursuit gold here a few nights ago. Now it bunches up near the front as the athletes try to decide who's the next to go. Petrosevchikova, there's Valente. Valente's had a lot of work to do this weekend. Team Pursuit, fourth place. Competed, as I mentioned yesterday, in the Madison. She is tonight with four events to make up the Omnium. Still riders just cycling through their turns at the front. The best place to be is, is near the front, but not at the front. You want to get up right close to a rider in front of you, enjoy that draft, saving about 30% of your energy expenditure. When you're at the front, you're really doing all the work. Stenberg, who's now pulling into the front, and actually just pulling off now, the Norwegian. She won the elimination race on the first medal evening of competition. And we'll see if she takes the same strategy later on in this elimination in the Omnium. She sat very near the back, flirted with danger, flirted with elimination a few times, but then Cream rising to the top near the end, and she ended up victorious. Already down to 12 laps, and, and nobody's really been able to break away. The laps are ticking down quite quickly, so you're likely going to see the tempo get quite a bit higher. The races, the nerves are going to be a little bit more frayed. They're going to be looking at the riders over their shoulders a little bit more as they try to set up for what could be a bunch sprint finish. Unless someone tries to break off the chain. It's Kopecky on the front. Amber Joseph from Barbados also there, 23 years old. Born in Barbados, moved to the UK, but her heart was still in the Caribbean, and she speaks for the land of her birth. Already down, nine laps to go. It's Balsamo on the front. If I remember correctly, she 
out sprinted Mariana Voss, a great Dutch rider to win her rainbow bands on the road a couple of years ago. Bunching right up near the front, so they, they might be settling in that this could come down to a bunch sprint and everybody wants to find the ideal position. Nobody really wants to lead things out. Getting towards the front when she needs to. the front but quickly going up high on the track they're just very very quick poles it's joseph inside six laps to go at this 250 meter track in southern ontario Time is done. Maria Martins moves forward. Gold in the scratch race earlier this year at the European Championships in Grinken, Switzerland. Now here comes the tempo increased. Four laps to go. Is it going to be someone who's going to try to upset the apple cart a little bit? And not have it go to a bunch sprint. It looks very much like that will be the case. Micah van der Duyn, a lot of Kopecky, Jennifer Valente, a whole lot of power there right at the front as we come up to two laps to go. It's Valente. If she's injured, she's not showing it. Elisa Balsamo, Micah van der Duyn. Here comes Katie Archibald coming up the outside. She's shoulder to shoulder with Lada Kopecky. There is the bell. Three riders across at the front. Inside 250 meters, it's Archibald who is pouring things on down the back stretch. She has opened up her sprint very early. Balsamo trying to keep pace. Archibald is going to take the first race of the Omnium. Katie Archibald first. Elisa Balsamo second and Jennifer Valente in third. A bunch sprint with some of the best riders on the track today, finding their way to the front and finishing in the top places. Perfect speed. Just under 47 and a half kilometers an hour with one gear and no brakes. Let's look at Archibald. Confirmation Omnium event one winner, the scratch race. Archibald timing it to perfection. Going on essentially a sprint for the last 250 meters. Puts a check in the box in race number one. Quickly, there is confirmation of the results. Archibald, Balsamo, and Valente, Valente, 40, 38, 36 points. All the way down to the top 10, that's Leia Lynn Teutenberg. Still a long way to go and expect that standings board to change quite a bit as we progress through the evening. Up next, we move to the men's sprint semifinals. Now it's a race of a different sort. A whole lot of compressed power. The men's individual sprint and a mouthwatering semi-final heat one. Nicholas Paul 
Bronze in the Kieran last night. 24 year old. Trinidad and Tobago going up against Matthew Richardson, who has only won races this weekend. The team sprint. And then yesterday, the Kieran. And in the quarterfinals earlier on, Richardson beat Maximilian Schachmann, who was the third rider on the podium in the Kieran last night. There's Richardson, born in the UK, moved to Australia at a young age. Gold in the Commonwealth Games in this distance last year. And the man he beat in the final, right there, Nicholas Paul. 2019 Pan Am champion in the sprint. As always, best two of three in this event. And they're off. It's a three lap. The clock actually stops, starts with only 200 meters to go, but it's three laps to build up to one final lap. And this is a common sight. The games begin. Because there's no point starting to sprint right now because you will quickly run out of energy. You compress that power into one big exertion. Paul is from Gasparillo, the southern part of the island of Trinidad. We'll see if they come to a complete stop. If you're new to the sport, it would be called a track stand. And it's all tactics. It's all gamesmanship. Sometimes riders want to be on the front as they come around. Other times, they want to come from behind. Paul swerving one way, then the other. These guys have raced each other plenty of times in their careers. Richardson now trying to go over the top around the outside. Now he dives and ducks inside, then outside again. Paul watching him closely. He's up by the fence. Richardson and Paul now out of the saddle to come up to hear the bell. 250 meters to go. Paul leading things around the turn, but here comes an injection of pace. The Australian Matthew Richardson trying to bring it around the outside, but Paul looks like he just hangs on to take race one. One nil Trinidad. And these two men raced at the Commonwealth Games in Birmingham in 2022. Richardson won it two races to none. First blood for the man from the Caribbean. So many tactics and permutations changing in such a short, so short period of time. Richardson inside, then outside, and then tries to bring it around, but just runs out of track. Paul did enough to, to throw him off and get himself to the line in the first place. is our second heat. Mohamed Shah Ferdows Sarom against, of Malaysia against Mateusz Rudik of Poland. 27-year-old Sarom. Here's a look at Rudik, who is also 27 from Oava in Poland. Diagnosed with type, two, type 1 diabetes at the age of 12. He rides for the Novo Nordisk Pro Team. There is Shadom. From Noir, southeast of Kuala Lumpur, which hosted the 1998 Commonwealth Games. Saram has been earmarked as part of a Malaysian government program to chase a gold medal at next summer's Olympics. Malaysia has never won Olympic gold. And there is Rudik being introduced. 
bronze medal in the sprint at the 2019 World Championships. Both of these men are headed for potential best finishes at the sprint in the Nations Cup. Sarom only could muster a 23rd in Cairo. Rudik was fourth in Cairo. So he will at least match that. He was 10th in Jakarta at the first stop earlier this year. Rudik leading things so out. This is the best of three situation here, folks. So these guys will get an opportunity to ride again. Just watching over his shoulder. Sarom stocks him. Good shake of the legs. Uh, his eyes affixed right in front of him. As if to say, don't worry, I'm coming for you. Rudik now picking things up. Sadon enjoying a bit of a draft right now. The tempo really ratcheting up now. Very long, long way out for this to go. Not quite at full speed yet, but they are certainly pushing. Now the bell. Rudik still leading things around. Sarom right behind him. He is in that slipstream. He's got to get out of it if he wants to chase it back around. Rudik still holding him off for now as they come around the final turn. Rudik bringing it to the line. Race one goes to Poland. Mateusz Rudik. The sprinters already gone through several rounds. First, they had to set a qualifying time just to get into one of the spots needed for the elimination rounds, and then they had a couple rounds to get us to the semi-final, which is where we are now. So there's a lot of competition even before we go live on your screens here. Getting set up for more sprint action, but it's of a different sort. It is, of course, the Kieran, women's Kieran. Two heats of six, the top three to qualify for the final. Second round today, they also had qualifying rounds to get to this point. Here's a look at Kelsey Mitchell, gold medalist in the sprint last night. 29-year-old, was fifth in this event in Tokyo. That's a look at Katie Marchant. 30-year-old from Leeds. There's the start list, Kelsey, Kelsey Mitchell, Martha Bayona. Katie Marchant, Miriam Vecce of Italy, Sun Young Cho, Cho Sun Young, and Luz Daniela Gathiola. So all three podium, all three women who were on the podium last night in the sprint are in this semifinal. That's Mitchell, Bayona, and Gathiola. Katie Marchant. Yorkshire. There's Miriam Vecce, fourth in the sprint in Cairo from Lombardia in Italy. Sun Young Cho, Gaffiola, and Bayona, a 27 year old. And there's Mitchell. Just a small acknowledgement of the crowd, as we saw a lot last night. She means work now, she means business, but when the race ends, She's very quick to lighten the mood and flash her smile. There is Vecce. So it works. Here comes the Derny, the electric motorbike. The gun goes off. The six riders follow in behind for three laps. The Derny gains speed over the course of those three laps, but the riders cannot go in front of it. After a lap, they can move around amongst themselves if they want to, get a different position closer to the front if they want. But then after lap three, the Derny pulls off. 
and the riders are released. And it's a mad dash over three laps to the finish line. The top three, as I mentioned, goes on to race for gold. Gold, silver, and bronze in formation right now from last night's sprint. Mitchell, Bayona, and Gathiola. One lap to go until the Derny goes off. Up to just over 43 kilometers an hour. Gatche, the 26-year-old. There goes the journey, and the riders are released. Not a lot of movement right now. It's Mitchell on the front. Only a very slim margin to Bayona. You just want to be top three. Bayona now ups the tempo right behind Mitchell. Mitchell senses it. Gets a little more pace. Now we start to pick things up with a lap and a half to go. It's Bayona, Mitchell side by side again, just like last night. Bayona trying to get to the front. Mitchell along the inside there could potentially be boxed in and could be in trouble if she can't find a lane. She does have that inside line though. It's Bayona, it's Gaffiola, and I think it's Marchant. One, two, three. The photo for first. And it looks like your top three, Gathiola, Bayona, and Marchant. With Mitchell finishing fourth and looking like she'll have to settle for the race for seventh. who surged late to finish third. Marchant, the bronze medal winner in the individual sprint at the 2016 Olympics. You're back at this race. Bayona, the animator, gets around the outside and has that clear track in front of her, and there's a look at the finish. Bayona wins this one and will try to move one step higher than where she was last night in the individual sprint. Confirmation of the results. Actually, they gave it to Luz Gathiola, so the bronze medalist from the sprint wins this one. Veche and Cho Sun Yun, fifth and sixth in the race, respectively. Second heat now. Just getting formed up on the track. Start list, Lorianne Genet of Canada, Veronica Jabornikova of, of Czechia, Lowry Thomas of Great Britain, Alessa Katrina Propster of Germany, Yuli Verdugo of Mexico, and Marlena Kavaka of Poland. There's Karvaka, 26 years old. Propster, you see her, the O in her second name, Katrina. There's a Canadian connection there. Her dad was a big fan of former Canadian speed skater, Katrina LeMay Doan, who has that way of spelling her name, C-A-T-R-I-O-N-A. -A. And since he was a big fan, that was her second name when she was born. Propster, a federal police officer. There's Janae, bronze medalist in the Kirin in Tokyo. Finished fifth in the individual sprint last night, did not get out of the quarterfinals. Props was the only one of these six athletes who's been on the podium in the Kieran in Nations Cup this season. It's a bronze medal at the last stop in Cairo. The Derny's around, the gun has gone, and the three form-up laps are underway. It's Genet of Levy, Quebec, which is just outside of Quebec City. Yuli Verdugo, she's from 
the Baja Peninsula of Mexico. Right behind her. And Javornikova, the 22-year-old 18th in the sprint yesterday. She hasn't made either of these knockout second round races in the Kieran in either of the two Nations Cups, so she's on course for her highest finish of the season. Always have to give the reminder that that is an electric motorbike on the front, so Genet is not sitting behind a tailpipe breathing in exhaust. Some movement near the back of the pack with Propster deciding to, yeah, I'm going to move up by the time the bike pulls off. And now she launches a bit of an attack from the outside. It's Thomas right with her. And Genet holding on to that second place with two laps to go. Propster, and then there's about four abreast coming around there on the back. That's Carvaca. She pulls to the front, and with a bit of a gap. They are going to come up to get the bell. Did Marlena Carvaca burn a few, too few of her, or too many of her matches too early? She's fighting valiantly to hang on. It's Genet leading things around the outside with Propster, the Canadian, and the German. And we're going to take this right to the finish. And a Lorraine Genet of Canada gets the ovation from the crowd. She wins heat two in round two of the women's Kieran. <laughs> Look at Lorianne Genet, the 24-year-old. This is her home track. The legacy of the 2015 Pan American Games has become the hub of this Canadian track program, although they uh, have opened another indoor facility in Bromont, Quebec. That's near Montreal. Look back, Genet going right up behind. Almost getting a nice little draft from our Derny driver. And then when they're released, it's Propster. An early animator. Carvaca tried launching up from a long way to go. They snuffed out that one, and it's the Canadian and the German, 1-2, crossing the line. And in third, Veronica Jabornikova of Czechia. Confirmation of those results. Fourth, fifth, and sixth from this race will also race in the classification race for seventh through twelfth. is more confirmation of what the final will be in the Kieran. Gathiola, Genet, Bayona, Propster, Merchant, and Jabornikova. And with the Kieran second round done, we will bring back some more match sprinting. Nicholas Paul looking to wrap things up, spare him a potential deciding race. Consolidate his energy for a final. Matthew Richardson obviously has different plans. Richardson's had something of a perfect weekend. He mentioned how confident he was, yet more confidence yesterday when he won the Kieran. So there is certainly no shortage of that coming into the semi-final, he's going to have to go into those confidence reserves a little bit to tie things up here against Paul. There's a look at Paul. His gold in the Kieran at the Commonwealth Games in 2022 snapped a 52-year drought in cycling for Trinidad. In Track cycling, very big deal in those two islands. And it will be Richardson leading this one up. They switch sides, race one. It was Paul on the inside. 
Race two, Richardson's turn to start on the inside. He has the opportunity to lead things out. So I have some record holders in the house here. Down in the VIP section, we feel that... There's nothing wrong with biking on the light blue paint, that part of the track. The sprint isn't underway, so they're not in their sprinting lanes. To break the sub 10. Now they go up high. Now here's the best chance for a track stand. I think they're moving a little bit too quickly. Richardson, a quick glance forward. But other than that, he's busy looking over his shoulder. Paul wanting to end this quickly. Both riders go up high. Paul. Sneaks a look down low. Almost a feint to see if Richardson will, will bite. Nothing doing. See some sprints go from a long way out. This, they're coming up to a lap and a half. Now they go forward. Richardson out of the saddle. Paul still sitting in the saddle. Getting into that slipstream as they come up to reach the bell. Now the race is on. Paul going around the outside. He is eating up big chunks of track there. He gets around the outside. Did he start his sprint too early? He tries to hold off Matthew Richardson, and Nicholas Paul wins it in two. That's how you do it. For the first time this weekend, Matthew Richardson will not stand atop the podium. Nicholas Paul. The clean sweep in two races. He will race for gold. heart on Nicholas Paul to drive those legs. That was a very, very long sprint. He got the advantage down the back stretch. Richardson and Sill had the inside line, but just sheer brunt force power of Nicholas Paul. Just that little bit more, at least today, than Matthew Richardson. Second opportunity or second heat now coming up. Look at Mohammed Shah Ferdows Sharom of Malaysia. He trails Mateusz Rudik. Mentioned that program earlier that uh, is targeting potential gold medals for Malaysia. It's the Road to Gold program. It's mostly being given to badminton players in Malaysia, but. Sarong, one of the athletes who could beat in other sports to get this little injection of training funding. 26 years old. I believe they're building a new indoor facility in Malaysia, one that hosted the 1998 Commonwealth Games in Kuala Lumpur has been taken down. So it's been a surprise throughout this pretty competition. Really great laps. Best finish in Nations Cup this year is a fourth. One more win, and he knows he's already improved on that. Sarom was 12th in the sprint at the Olympics in Tokyo. He's deciding to ramp things up right now. Two laps to go, no games, let's go. It's just a game of cat and mouse right now. Sarom followed the leader, Rudish, is doing whatever it takes to just stay on the tail. Now the bell, Sarom still in front, Rudik tucks in right behind him, getting that full strip stream. Now he just drops the hammer down the back straight. Mateusz Rudik 
coming around to the line. He will race for gold. Just explosive down the back straight. Sarom opened things up early. Perhaps thought he could have surprised Rudik in forcing him to chase. There was not much of a gap there. Rudik dove into the slipstream. It's just right there to launch a counterattack. Had time to, to cruise a little bit to the finish line. Of course, in addition to Nations Cup glory, bragging glory, these countries are trying to collect Olympic qualifying points. There's a formula. It's a big one. It involves world championships, continental championships, Nations Cup. The Nations Cup contribution is there are three events a year. They take a country's best two results in an event. So it's just one part of complicated formula as teams try to qualify full rosters of riders. There will be the start list for the sprint medal races. Paul and Rudik for gold. Richardson and Sarom for bronze. And we take a little break from the sprinting. And we return to the Omnium, the tempo race. This will get an explanation, but the riders just starting to form up here. There's Jennifer Valente. sitting in third place right now on 36 points. The defending world champion. San Diego, California, started in track at the age of 13. Tagged along with some friends to a junior national championships and just started winning races. Lisa Balsamo, second place right now. And it looks like the riders will quickly get to line up now. So let's explain the tempo race. Another 7.5 kilometer race, much like the scratch race. There is a slight difference. Let's so look at Katie Archibald, the European champion winner of race one. Every lap, is a sprint lap, essentially. Once the official racing is underway, the first place rider over the line is awarded a point. If you gain a lap on the field, you gain 20 points. If you fall off the back and the field laps you, you lose 20 points. So yesterday, it was Tim Torn Tutenberg of Germany in the men's race. He went early and just decided to start picking up individual points. Just picked them off lap by lap. There's Yvonne Anita Stenberg. But anyway, again, all sorts of tactics at play here. And the points you gain in this race do not count towards the overall. If you win, you just get another 40 points. It's not until the points race to conclude the evening that any points earned in that race go towards your total. But we'll worry about that when we get there. A look at the standings coming in. Archibald, Balsamo, Valente, but so much power behind it. Vanderdoin, Ukena Ladarke, Lotta Kapeki. Let's see how this plays out. Commissaires comfortable with how things look. Blow the whistle. They will form up. The riders are going to bring it back around, and if the commissaire is satisfied with the grouping, we'll hear the start of the race. And it's Balsamo 
leading things around. Stenberg right behind her. Push the ball now. And now they start to count things down. And it's Leia Lynn Tutenberg on the attack. And it will be remiss, the, the points don't start counting right away. You'll hear the bell to indicate it, if I'm not mistaken. Leia Lynn Tutenberg tried to do what her brother did last night and jump out to a gap before they start handing out points. But perhaps some of these riders saw that and they said, we know what your family does. We know your tactics. It's not going to work this time. Still just a bunch right now. Nobody wanting to get an early break, an early chance to pick up points. And there's the bell. Now the sprint lap is underway. Now we start to hand out individual points on every single lap. And it's Aline Seitz on course to pick up the first point. Six-year-old, she rides for Israel Premier Tech Roland Development on the road. And before you have a time to really catch your breath, another point's going to be given out. This time it's Elisa Balsamo. Nobody. Oh, and there's a crash. And there's a bike in the middle of the track. Lucky only one rider went down. I believe it might have been Maho Kakita of Rakuten K Dreams. Just looking behind her, clips the wheel. And it's just, you always have to be paying attention of where you are and what you're doing, because Balsamo moved in front and Kakita just caught her back wheel. Right now on the front, Micah, Micah Vanderdoin, who's picking up some points now. The 21 year old, and now Katie Archibald deciding to turn the screws a little bit. So I want you to get in the scratch and see if she's wanting just one point or wanting more. time around. It is a Canadian not in their usual jersey. That's Maggie Coles Lister riding for Star Trek Cycling. The trade team here. She's actually the national road champion. But uh, is actually looking for a club or a team to race with on the road. She parted ways with Zaf Pro Cycling recently and that's after some earlier drama with Another project that didn't come together to start the season. Here's Lister, I think she's been in Europe or abroad for something like the past five months. This is her first time at home in a long, long time. She's from the West Coast, so she's still a long way from home, but she, at least she's in her home country. There's the current standings. Four riders with one point. Actually, I'm getting that there. Archibald, I believe, has two. There's Martins picking up one. 23-year-old from Mossaria, Portugal. Now Valente hits the front. She's also on the board now, so very little separating the teams. A couple riders have fallen off the back. Amber Joseph of Barbados. Chloe Moran of Australia. There have been plenty of crashes on this track this weekend. A lot of work done to keep it in top shape and riding shape. And it's Archibald coming around to claim another point. And we've got 
nobody trying to go for the 20 just yet. Still a large group, though, as I say that, Archibald and Micah Vanderdoin, they're off on an attack. They already got a good chunk of the straightaway. That's Sarah Van Dam in the Canadian kit trying to chase them down. She's looking over her shoulder, though, and there is not a whole lot of organization in the peloton right now. And that is a very dangerous game because Katie Archibald, well, we know what she does. She does Katie Archibald things that usually lands her on top of the podium. If you're trying to follow along, we'll try to keep it clear as black for you guys. So all the stairs maybe in the Archibald and Van Der Doen. Van Der Doen more than happy to just see Archibald picking up the points. Coming up to Nine laps to go. Katie Archibald picking up the laps, just one at a time here. And they are very close to picking up 20. It looks like there's not much of a fight in the peloton. As I say that though, a lot of Kopecky and Elisa Balsamo launch a counterattack. This time, the peloton does try to react to it. Perhaps trying to stave off Luke going down 20 points. But Archibald, as they do that, more than happy to keep picking up laps, keep picking up points every single lap. Once again, it wasn't much of an effort from the peloton. They bunch back up again on the high side of the track. And they just keep getting closer, Vendedoin. Leading the way, she picks up individual points, and they, I believe we will see 20 points coming imminently. Sarah Van Dam, the Canadian, leading the attack, the 21 year old from Victoria, British Columbia. It's on Vancouver Island from on the west coast. Stenberg, Kapeki, all both following her, as is Ukena Lararte of Spain. And this is quite the powerful quartet. See if they can organize themselves. Stenberg and Kapeki deciding to just go it alone now as a, as a duet. Kapeki just going off on her own, and she'll start picking up single points now. As once the lap is made, Archibald and Vanderdoin, once they make the catch, it all sort of regroups. So the individual points go back to the front. There is the bell lap. It's Lotta Kapeki leading things around. Anita Stenberg second, Ukena Lararte, and Sarah Van Dam in third and fourth. Kapeki going to come around here to wrap things off, but Katie Archibald, Micah Vanderdoin with their 20 points earned, will finish 1-2. And it's second and third, Stenberg and Van Dam. So we'll just await the calculations and permutations, but Archibald picking up the most points in the women's tempo race. She's two for two in tonight's Omnia. European champion living up to the jersey that's on her back. There's a look at Kopecky, picking up a few points late on. Point for Aline Seitz. There's the crash. Kakita hitting the deck hard. And then Archibald led an attacking duo. Van Dam, one who livened things up here. And then finally, Kapeki, who picked up a lot of the late points. There we 
results. The standings after two events. Archibald on 80, adding to her lead. Venderdoin and Stenberg, 68 apiece. Valente, 64. All still very close. And as I will continue to remind you, expect it to change even within the final race of the night. see them in just a little bit for the elimination race. A lot of Kopecky. Take some deep breaths ahead of the next race. Because it's Madison time. If you know what that means, you know what's coming. You see the two Canadian riders going out. That's because it's teams of two. There was a qualifying Madison this morning just to get into this field. One trade team entered. It's Chaney Windows and Doors, or one trade team that's qualified, rather. I suppose it's time to explain the Madison. Two riders, 200 laps. Sprint laps every 10 laps. You get points assigned to the top four teams. Five, three, two, and one. The final sprint point at the very end is double points. And as always, you gain a lap on the field, you get 20, you get lapped, you lose 20. <laughs> Simple enough in theory, I suppose. Chaotic, though, in practice. And you'll see what I mean if you don't believe me. Yesterday's Women's Madison was an event-filled race. Crashes. Race was neutralized at one point. And yet somehow, Belgium, the world champions, finding their way to the top once again. Pardon me, a couple other. There are three trade teams that qualified, not just the one. Bridgestone Cycling beat Cycling Club as well. Some fans here having a good time. I believe their fans, based on their chests, fans of Canadian Michael Foley. I guess those are the perks of being a local. You get your family and friends in whatever state to come visit. Foley, a 24-year-old rider. Can't help but smile. He's teaming up with Dylan Bibich for this. Foley out of Milton, so easy trip in for family and friends. This velodrome paying dividends, producing Canadian talent. Canada churning out a lot of endurance track riders. This kind of race, yes, it, it's good to be the strongest team. There's certainly some luck involved, but knowing where to be and knowing how to stay out of trouble is a gift. Ibic will likely see in Glasgow in August to defend his scratch World Championships jersey. Here's a look at Belgium. 
Artur Denz and Noah Vandenbranden. One rider of one team starts on this near side. Their teammate starts up on the fence by the other. And then they'll circulate. And we will talk about the hand slings in just a little bit. You'll see plenty of that. Always an eye-opening experience for someone who uh, may have never heard of the Madison. There are the starting riders. Great Britain, Mark Stewart and Oliver Wood. Stewart crashed yesterday in the Omnium. He led for so long. In the end, just faltering a little bit in the points race. But he crashed, but he's back tonight. Oliver Wood, the 27-year-old. There is Jan Willem van Schip, who's on the podium in the Omnium. Six foot four. Teamed up with Philip Heinen. And the formation lap. Foley's fans cheering him on. He should get the gun. We are underway. So 199, 200 laps to go, or 199 plus. We count down also. And uh, counting down to our first sprint point, which comes up with 190 laps to go. So there's a lot to pay attention to. The best challenge that there really is is to just follow along what's going on at the front. Fortunately, the commissaires are down there pointing to the leaders. And each time, of course, there is a bell lap, they lead, ring it for those in front. So if you fall behind, there are ways to catch up. And there's a good look at an arm sling there by Bridgestone Cycling. Eiya Hashimoto Naoki Kojima. And the French team is on the front. Thomas Bouda, Benjamin Thomas. The French are the world champions. That was Thomas and Donovan Grandin, who we saw last night winning the Omnium. We have a reserved start to this one. Still a pack together. There's a whole lot of weaving in, in and around people doing their exchanges. So especially as the race drags on, the legs get tired, the mind gets tired. That's when mistakes can happen. And so just there will be a lot unfolding over the now 194 laps to go. That's an injection of tempo by Czechia, Denis Rugovac. Sebastian Mora, we saw him last night. So there's already a warning flashed up on the board for one of the sides. A couple of them, Spain and China, both look like they have them up next to their names. Just commissaires are always quick to alert those sorts of things last night. We'll get back to that in just a second. It is Beat Cycling taking the first sprint point. That is Vincent Hapazak. We saw him in the Omnium quite a bit last night. So the warnings are, are just in case for riders who are living life a little too dangerously. We saw it last night when one of the Brazilian riders eventually biked into the back of the U.S. as they were making an exchange. Confirmation of the first points, and it's our club teams up front. Beat Cycling, Bridgestone in second with three points, Germans with two, and Czechia. That's the first fourth place finish. Long, long way to go. 
these races almost take on a life of their own. They really ramp up as we get closer to a sprint. And they sort of ease off and a group kinds to sort of reshape. So unless someone's trying to go off on a breakaway, there's a whole lot of ups and downs and ebbs and flows in this race. It's the Canadians leading the way. That is Dylan Bibich, the 19-year-old. A lot of talk around that young man. A lot of career left ahead of him. There's the warning for Spain. Confirmation there. Great Britain making an exchange right at the front. And Oliver Wood enters the conversation. Six feet tall from West Yorkshire, the town of Wakefield. Surge here coming from the Asian champions from Japan. That's you'll see a lot of that. That's that's they're looking like a textbook hand sling by the Austrian side. And I mean exchanges can be done by sort of any contact, but you want to give your teammates some momentum to just go forward and without missing a stride, get right back into the action. Great Britain doing a good example of that right now, and Japan leading things around as we reach another sprint lap. Japan leading things. Great Britain second, France third, Austria on pace for a fourth. We'll see how things shape out around the final turn, and it is Japan picking up four points. Not any movement on that last lap. So the Asian champions get five points. Kazushige Kuboki and Shutsuke Imamura. That group now deciding to push things up a little bit. It's France, Japan, the animators now forcing other teams to chase them down. Canada moving forward. There is a crash. It's affected Japan right on the start finish. And definitely in some pain. That's Kazushige Kuboki. Let's see if there's any decision to neutralize. It's right there on the track. Off the track, pardon me. Still going right now. Someone will have to eyeball the track to see if there's any damage. We are closing in five laps until our next sprint. There has sort of been a reformation. Be interesting to see if Kuboki can get back going. He's on his feet. He's nodding along, shaking things off, and right, if Czechia also involved. If your teammate is still in the race, he has to go solo. And if you're riding a lot of laps on your own, you're wasting a lot of energy. So you obviously hope your teammate is OK, but you also want your teammate to be as OK as quickly as possible. Right in the background there, the two riders got tangled up. It was right in the back of that shot. Another rider was Jan Vonish. There is the bell, Beat Cycling, leading things around. It's Yori Havik being chased down by France, and it's still Havik leading full points. And it's Thomas Buda. Oh, pardon me, I've missed Great Britain off the front, it seems. Get that resorted soon enough. Nope, it is beat cycling leading things around. We're all good. Now there is a trio though 
quartet, rather, deciding to force things. And Austria, Canada, Portugal leading the chase. Beat Cycling, the trade team from the Netherlands, along with France, Great Britain, and Germany. Wonder these teams, Portugal trying to bridge Canada. Their teams will want to either try to get the pack back together or bridge on their own and join the attack themselves. But very strung out at the moment. Benjamin Thomas for France. Making the exchange, and the group has reformed with Portugal on the front. Halfway to our next sprint point. Speed's picking up. Portugal trying to hold on the front. Here we go, turn over to Great Britain. There's a bit of an attack down the inside. Lifting the tempo. Mark Stewart of Great Britain. Certainly a few teams have really been the animators so far. You see France there with the uh or Chalma there who's on the women's Madison race uh yesterday. A lot of women had all line of stern right now. It was too fast for someone to try to break away. With two laps to go, now coming up to the bell, shaping up for another sprint. Great Britain, France both make exchanges, leading Canada around, Germany trying to close things in fourth. It looks like Canada could be coming in to pick up some points. I'm Great Britain and France. And Michael Foley. Certainly pleasing those hometown fans there to see him. And two points for Canada. And the home side is on the board. There's confirmation of those points. Current standings. Great Britain and Beat Cycling on 10 points apiece. France in third with eight. Japan with five in fourth. And Germany on four points in fifth place. So, still a long, long way to go. Those standings unlikely to stay that way. Now it's sort of the exhale portion of the sprint. Our team sort of settle back into a bit of a rhythm. Bunching back up. Good luck at Foley. Pardon me, that's, uh, that is Dylan Vibich. Pardon me, the 19-year-old. He's about to bring in Foley. There's Foley right there. 24 years old, 5 foot 10. Again, 20 bonus points are still up for grabs to anybody who Kazakhstan trying to force the issue now. That is Ramos Dimukamatov. And he has a bit of a gap now. Also have to wonder if maybe they're just moving in front just to make some ease, make the exchanges easier. No worries about traffic staying out of danger. Quickly reform. Still easy to follow here. It's all still largely one pack. No sides have even have lost a lap yet, it seems, but there is the bell. And Japan makes an exchange. Kuboki back in. Seems to be fine, but it is his teammate who's taking that now in for the sprint. It's going to be Portugal taking this one. 
Japan second, Germany and Kazakhstan close for third. Ivo Alves of Portugal evenings. He just switches in Yuri Leitao, who was in the Omnium last night. And now again, the reformation, the, the exhale, as I'm calling it, as the teams all bunch back up together. And the games and the tactics return once again, shaping things up for the next sprint. It's Cheney windows and doors on in that Stars and Stripes jersey on the front. Jersey Windows and Doors has Colby Lang, who raced in the Omnium last night, and Tristan Manderfield. And it's Lang. He's now racing, and Canada hits the front alongside France. Coming up to four laps to go. There is another rider down that we've missed there, and it's bad luck day. Is that Kuboki again? It was certainly not his day. So Shunsuke Imamura. Gonna be tired tonight. And Kuboki will just be sore. So Imamura will stay in as long as possible, but it, with this long to go, I think you need a teammate still to go. Imamura sitting fourth wheel right now at the front as we are coming up to another sprint point. Teammate Kuboki getting his bike looked at. And it's France leading things around to the bell again. France and Great Britain at the front, as they have been several times. Japan still in the mix to pick up a few more points right ahead of Germany. And that's how it's going to look like. One, two, three, and four. The young Canadian side in fifth, just out of the points. Commissaire having a word with Kazushige Kuboki. And now Britain, Great Britain off on a bit of an attack. And Dylan Bibich looking around to see if anyone wants to help in the chase. Italy now deciding to join in Kazakhstan with them. Is Scartazzini, uh, Michele Scartazzini for Italy. And is this the forming up of a bit of a group, or are we going to just reform once again? It's Sling from Canada to get Michael Foley into the mix. What you try to do with these attacks, if you don't gain a gap, if you don't try to get a lap, you're, you're forcing those teams behind to expend some energy. Some of them might lose contact, and you might see some people lose a lap, but you're, you're tiring them out as this long race goes, as they reform up once again, but there's been a bit of an exertion, so the legs are getting that little bit more tired with 135 laps still to go. The Madison, as we always like to, say, to talk about, in French, it's called L'Américaine, the American. Its history dates back to big events, big Madison races at Madison Square Garden. The name has stuck. And I'm not sure if there are Madison races at Madison Square Garden anymore. It would be cool if there were, although I think that facility is I think mostly taken up with Billy Joel concerts and hockey and basketball games. But maybe one day. France on the front, defending world champions. And I'm guessing uh, Benjamin Thomas doesn't wear the world champions jersey because 
you have a teammate that can't wear it, Toma Bouda, you don't want to have the confusion of the clashing. So both of them are in the French Navy blue with the tricolore around the midsection. Another bell lap. Brickstone Cycling Club on the front. They're going to make a, an exchange as we come up to pick up the points. And they will pick up another five. Germany second, Great Britain third, another fifth place for the Canadians. There's confirmation of those results. Bridgestone in Germany, France, Great Britain. And just an update on our Japanese team. I see Kazushige Kuboki is back in the race. So the adrenaline probably coursing through him to dull any pain he's feeling after hitting the deck a few times. Check the updated standings in France now in first on 15 points. Great Britain second and a tie for third at the moment between Beat Cycling and Japan. But Germany there though, Bridgestone there is close as well. So any sprint points, there's still a lot of sprint points to go. So if anyone picks up a couple of wins, you could shoot right up the standings. All right, so the pack is back together here. A bit of an attack. That's Eric Martorell. Springy clicks back out again. We are always counting down to the next sprint point. 125 coming up to 124 laps to go. But we are four laps from the next sprint, and the usual suspects coming back to the front. I see France, I see Great Britain, I see Bridgestone, I see Germany. Still a bit of time left, though. Benjamin Thomas with the red numbers for France. Now he switches over to Bouda. Bouda is from Langon in the Gironde region, so around Bordeaux. Four teams near the front. It's Belgium entering the fray. Portugal behind them. France looking to add to their lead. And Kazakhstan looking to pick up a third point potentially. the danger, Italy is leading the pursuit. A lot of teams starting to suffer. Now it's really getting frayed at the back. There's a whole lot of traffic there weaving in and out. Looking at the front now, it's Italy, Kazakhstan, France, Bridgestone, Belgium, and now there is a slight reformation, but a lot of teams are just trying to chase to get back into the mix. If they're chasing now, it'll be tough for them to involve themselves in the sprint, the next sprint, when that tempo gets ramped up all the more. Commissaire is down there, as I mentioned, always indicating where the lead team is is very helpful in a race like this. That is Ramas Dimukamatov, Kazakhstan there, as Michele Skartizini goes to the front. And there is a reformation, but we'll see how much those efforts just to chase back on have affected a lot of the teams here. The French in that bright orange helmet makes it very easy to spot trying to look for the hand of your teammate. It's Mark Stewart, 27-year-old, leading 
things around. He was leading the Omnium until the final race. The points race didn't go as planned. And now, coming up to two laps before our next next sprint point, pardon me. And it's Japan. Forget fatigue, forget sore bones. They are leading this one around and the exchange is made. That is Shunsuke Imamura leading things around. Toma trying to close it down, but Imamura, another five points for Japan. France in second, Great Britain another third, Germany fourth, and, oh, pardon, giving it to Portugal, they've got, I believe it's Germany. Anyway, it is Canada with yet another fifth place. So there's a pattern to this, no matter what happens. Great Britain and France seem to always be in the points. Japan usually is up there, and Canada, is likely finishing fifth, at least through a whole lot of these sprints so far. Closing in on the halfway mark, an update on our standings. France on 20 points, Great Britain on 16, Japan on 15, and then Germany and Beat Cycling tied for fourth with 10 points. A reminder, the last sprint point at the very end of the race is double points as if it wasn't chaotic enough. France just going through and out quickly. It's too early to be spending much time on the front. Right now, Bridgestone leading the way. And cycling through the wash, almost Canada coming back to the front. They were hanging out near the back. Now, a little more comfortable. The fatigue is very much setting in though as we approach 100 laps to go. Here comes Beat Cycling. A little burst of energy to make the exchange and the sling throws forward. Nicely done by them as Yuri Havik shaking things up here. And they're taking Portugal and Spain so Iberian Peninsula neighbors going with Yori Havoc. Havoc, the 2022 points race world champion. And they actually won the Madison last year. He did with Jan Willem van Schip. Van Schip racing with the Netherlands, so they both won last year. But on the rival sides this year, there's the bell. Portugal, Beat Cycling, Spain, France, Belgium, and Canada. And it looks like it's going to be Beat Cycling coming back around to take five points. Portugal second, Spain third, and another point for France. Belgium in fifth, and that time Canada in sixth. But there is a gap. We'll see if these guys start to work together. The Netherlands, Great Britain, and Bridgestone, and Japan now having to work to close the gap, and it looks like they are going to be doing that within pretty short order. But there now appears to be something of an elite selection, two real solid groups about closing in on half a lap apart. Portugal, though, now upping the tempo solo. That's Yuri Leitao. Pursuers. That's Buddha. Now we're really starting to scatter around the track as we're into the second half of the race. So on the front, the 19 year old Canadian Bibich. Still a long way to go before the next sprint point, so we've seen Canada on the front before, but then things change in a fraction of a second as teams shape up for another sprint. Give a chappy to slow things down a little bit, let someone else go to do the work, and Jan Willem van Schip says, I'm more than happy to do it myself, and off he goes, provoking a chase.
Two more teams, four more teams starting to rejoin this front group. The American side from Cheney, Windows and Doors, Italy, Kazakhstan and Austria. Closing back in. As we come up to two laps to go before the next sprint point. Here comes a move from the Austrians on the outside. They saw their national velodrome in Vienna closed. They do a lot of their training abroad now. There is the bell. France, Great Britain once again. Two teams who have always been there, but beat cycling coming around the outside, and they will get full points. That was Vincent Hoppezak. Another five for beat cycling. That puts them into second place now. France in second. Great Britain third, Bridgestone in fourth. So, updated. France on 24, beat cycling in the second in, with 20. Great Britain with 18, Japan with 15. 88 laps to go. Bunching back up again, so every time the gaps have opened up and the teams have sort of scattered, there has pretty much always been every team coming back together from the looks of things. Doesn't look like anybody's lost a lap yet. Now off on a flyer. Great Britain, Mark Stewart. It's Italy and Austria at the front of the chase, Cheney windows and doors as well. Tristan Menderfield. Although anytime you see a peloton bunching up like that, there's not a lot of organization, there's not a lot of speed, and this might be the one that gets away. Great Britain has the elastic finally snapped. They have at least the straightaway. And now the calculation comes into play. It looks like he's not going to be catching the back of the field anytime soon, so it might not be an issue. But you want to get the five points before you get the 20. Just maximize your opportunity. So Stewart's going to come around to get the bell lap. So it looks like they might be timing this one nicely. They are on pace to get the five points, and then they can start to think about the 20. And if that happens, we'll have a new team atop the leaderboard. Mark Stewart gets full five points for Great Britain. Stewart from Dundee of World Championships in Scotland. But now it's Oliver Wood. And when the field is fractured, fractured like that. It's up to the commissaires to decide when the lap is made. There's France leading the pursuit. And I think they may be starting to close it back up. It's no longer a certainty that Great Britain will get that away. Stewart is pushing. They are closing in on a few of the back markers, but they have a gap between them and the main field that wouldn't count for 20. But at the very least, Great Britain on course for another full five points. That 
That British effort, though, has really put teams into the red. Struggling to stay together. A lot of the other teams trying to chase Great Britain. And then the other teams are just trying to chase those teams. And so a lot of energy being wasted. And now Britain looking odds on. They see them at the end of the home straight. That carrot dangles in front of them. Great Britain will come up to get the bell this time around. And once again, ideally, if you're Great Britain, you time it so you get the five points and then you get the 20 points. And they may just be doing that. We'll see what the commissaires decide. I think they'll be okay. Britain goes for five. And then moments later, we see if they get the 20. There's the race for second on right now. It looks like it's Bridgestone. Cheney windows and doors, and Canada gets up a single point. The curse of fifth place is over for them, at least for one sprint point. And it's Canada, Cheney windows and doors, the two. Maybe a bit of a word there. I wonder if they say, hey, maybe we should go. Catch has now been made, so we're going to see a big reshuffling atop the leaderboard. And now the group is back together, so the sprint points will come once again from this group unless someone else ventures off the front. There are the standings. Great Britain with that 20, 48 points. France on second place now, 24. Bridgestone cycling with 20 and two teams, both the Japanese trade team side, Bridgestone and the national team side on 15 points apiece. And Britain now can afford to take a little bit of a breather, although they move right back to the front again. Mark Stewart. I guess that, that allows them to dictate things a little bit. Warn other teams off from perhaps making it an attack. Now it's France. Now they go, Belgium going with them. They needed a reaction, a 24-point margin. Belgium, Czechia, and Portugal all trying to go, but Kazakhstan and Great Britain leading the pursuit. Jordan's. Swinging in Noah van den Brenden for the Belgians. There is the bell. Belgium, Czechia wanting to get some points. So it's going to be close, but it's going to be Belgium, then Czechia, Portugal. Does France sneak up for another one? Yes, they do. Down to 60 laps. That's China just losing and wondering what the whistle is and the red flag. That's China down a lap. So they're the first side to lose 20 points. But Portugal, Belgium, France pressing on. Czechia not really able to hang in there. Beat cycling and Bridgestone cycling leading a counterattack. And again, we are scattered all over the track. up to C56, Portugal currently sitting with 13 points in sixth place. Belgium right now in seventh on 10 points. There's a look at it, and that's actually Great Britain going down. There's so much going on, I missed that. It looked like, I'm not sure if it was Stewart or Wood. 
Stewart, of course, crashing yesterday. Let's see where things are. I see on the track right now, it's Mark Stewart. If this race isn't chaotic enough, I think it was Oliver Wood who's riding around on the inside. He's back on his bike. There's a nice grip on his kit. Big or red welt on the back of his leg. And when you crash like that, you may not feel the burn right away, but that skin is going to be sore tomorrow. Of course, in addition to any muscular or bone injury potentials. There is a bell lap. While that all played out, we are still sort of scattered around the track. French side, 49 laps to go. Spain being chased. The Italians, a good example of the arm sling there. Scartazzini and Mattia Pinazzi. Cheney windows and doors. There is a warning assigned to beat cycling. It's the Spaniards leading things right now. Cheney windows and doors and Italy trying to lead the pursuit. All right, so here are the teams that were awarded with. And there are a bunch of teams who have just gained a lap. Bridgestone, Beat Cycling, Japan, Portugal, Belgium, Czechia, and the Netherlands. Sort of explains a little bit of the chaos all over the track there before this last little reformation. And let's update those standings. Great Britain, 48 points. France, 45. Beat Cycling, 40. Bridgestone and Japan both on 35. And it's Canada here leading the pursuit of Spain. We've got back together. Thomas Ayers point at the current leaders anyway. But Spain hasn't gained a lap, so they are currently still sitting with only a handful of points. 20 would certainly give their ranking a big shot in the arm. Bell lap coming. And coming around. Eric Mactorel to pick up five points for Spain. They're eyeing 20 more. We'll readjust Spain, Portugal, Japan. Let's see who they call it for fourth. It's the Canadians picking up another point. They're getting their points really in ones an occasional fourth place. With Portugal having already picked up a lap. They're in Japan also picking up a lap. They're a team to watch. So you see the French leading a charge with Italy. Great Britain also has to be wary of things out there. As Spain closing in on the back markers. Really inching closer to gaining a valuable lap. There's the readjustment in the rankings. Great Britain now 48, France 45, Beat Cycling 40. And it looks like Spain could be getting some company. The Asian champions from Japan and Portugal closing right back up. Kazushige Kuboki, he's taken his lumps today. He makes the exchange to Shunsuke Imamura. And now it's three. France now sensing the danger to their own ranking. Closing very, very quickly. And now it's looking more likely that black and blue jerseys were 
coming up to 34 laps to go. So, currently, Portugal in front of Japan and Spain. France closing. Beat Cycling and Canada also trying to get up there. And Great Britain, they're ranking atop the standings ever more precarious. Portugal leading things around to the next bell lap. 20 points is looking, I think, less and less likely, but we'll see what happens. Portugal, Japan, Spain, France leading things around at the moment. And it's going to be five more points for Portugal. And then Japan beat cycling, just getting up for third. And Spain and France were both very close. And it looks like Spain gets the fourth spot. The Canadians have fallen back into a group with Great Britain, Belgium, and Cheney windows and doors. Britain also now a little more urgency is their lead is a little more tenuous with some teams chasing them up the road, up the track. Updated rankings there for you. Great Britain, 48, 45 for France, 42. Beat cycling in Portugal now with 41. And another five points for them, and they are right up into potentially a silver medal position. And they are actually now coming up to some back markers. We'll see what the commissaires decide. If this is where the peloton is, what merits 20 points? It's been a long, long attack for Portugal. Not sure if they will assign it, but you never know. They have given one. That explains the 41 points for them now. Although now the next question is, where do the next five point sprint comes from? Keeping your eye on several points, I'm looking at our commissaires. It's from the group that contains Japan, France, Spain, and Beat Cycling. About to be rejoined by Belgium, Canada, Cheney, Windows and Doors, the Netherlands, and Great Britain. So, that will be the group for the next five point sprint at the moment. Although, anytime we see shots of commissaires looking concerned and talking to each other, I wonder if things will change. But for the moment, we'll pay attention to what's going on here. There's the bell, there's the indicator. France leading out the next sprint. But it's Beat Cycling with a burst of power. They want to come around and get five points. They see third place in the side of things. And there it is. And let me reconfirm, Portugal had already previously gained a lap. They've now gained a second one. So we have a big shuffling atop the standings. Let me update that in just a minute once we see the standings reflect that. Portugal having picked up two laps. That's 40 points right there. Beat Cycling, winners of the last sprint. France in second, Japan third, Spain fourth. There's confirmation of that with just two sprints to go. And for our sprint purposes, that French group is still the lead group. That's where the sprint points come from. So there it is, 61 points with that second lap gained, and Portugal is trying to get up to that lead group where they're considering the sprint point. So it's Portugal on 61, France and Great Britain both on 48, Beat Cycling on 47. 
So Portugal having gained the 20, they're now sort of caught in the middle because they're not in that group where the sprint determination right, comes from. So that means they are not in a position to pick up any more points right now. And if France and Great Britain keep getting sprint wins, they could move closer to the lead. And it's the French side. Benjamin Thomas. Trying to keep trying to keep the Portuguese team behind them. But Portugal looks like they might make the connection. And would be in a position to pick up points in the next sprint. It's a lot of work for them to get around a few of those riders, though. Japan now hitting the front, currently in fifth place. They are going to hear the bell, the penultimate bell, beat cycling right behind them. And it's Imamura being swung in. A nice lead for Shunsuke Imamura. They lead Beat Cycling, but it's Beat Cycling with the late gasp. The last gasp burst at the end to pick up five points. Hupazak gets the five. Japan second, Great Britain third. And we have one final sprint point left to go. That, of course, is double points. And it's Spain off the front. They are currently on 14 points. So they need 20, they need 10, and they need some help, essentially, to really get anywhere near the podium, 20 at least. There's the updated standings. Portugal, 61. Britain and Beat Cycling both on 52. And France on 49. All to play for here. On the final sprint, six laps to go. The lead group, I watch our commissaire. And he indicates it's Spain and the Netherlands. As Philip Heinen moves to the front, and he just continues powering on. The Netherlands currently on 20 points. They're trying to steal themselves away. Spain, France, Beat Cycling, Great Britain, Canada, Belgium all leading the pursuit. Jan Willem van Schip on pace to pick up the final 10 points. Wouldn't do the Netherlands really any good when it comes to the podium. It would get a nice boost up the rankings, though. Two laps to go. Great Britain and France. And beat cycling all the potential teams who want to sort of flank the size of the podium are chasing Jan Willem van Schip. He has a lot of traffic there, but here come Great Britain. Here comes France. They're closing in on Netherlands as our Beat Cycling. And so 10 points to Netherlands, second to France. Beat Cycling in third, Great Britain in fourth. Portugal, though, celebrating our victorious in this Madison race. We will see how these double points play out. And so in the end, taking two laps proves decisive for Portugal. Just awaiting the final sprint point to be updated. Gold medal for Portugal. And that is their first medal of this weekend. And it's gold. Celebrates a win. 
Beat Cycling takes silver five points back in with 56 points. And the French, that last bit of effort to catch second place behind the Netherlands. They move up on 55 points to claim bronze. Great Britain leaders for so long. They are in fourth on 52 points. I'll say that was a breathless race. I'm just about out of mine. A look back for a long time. A lot of teams were stuck together. It was really once we hit the second half and the fatigue started to set in that the breaks happened. Teams went forward, teams fell off the back. Kudos to the Japanese side who suffered a couple of crashes and still managed to finish fifth. But in the end, Portugal celebrates. There are the final standings. Portugal, 61, beat cycling, 56. France, 55, to claim bronze. Host Canadians, the young Canadian side in 12th on six points. And then a few of the teams there who dropped laps. Jubilation on the Portuguese side. Congratulations to them. Evo Alves and Yuri Leitao. Pose ourselves after that race. We are going to have to move on pretty quickly. The sprints for the medals are coming up. Nicholas Paul, Trinidad and Tobago, a camera in his face. That's what happens when you're about to race for gold. start with the bronze medal race. Matthew Richardson looking for his third medal of the weekend against Mohamed Shah Firoz Sharom of Malaysia. Sharom lost to Rudik Richardson to Nicholas Paul. do one race, and then we'll go back to the women's omnium for the elimination race. With a few crashes in the Madison, I think they'll always want to double check to see if uh, it's the track still maintains its integrity or if they have to bring out the dustpan, broom, and sandpaper again. diligent crew, the technical delegates, and the staff to make sure there's no risk to the athletes, although a few of them, having seen a few of these crashes this weekend, a few of them might have some souvenirs they didn't plan to get embedded in their bodies somewhere. Get women's Kieran as well. At the commissaire's table. Serious discussions underway.
just finishing some track maintenance right now, making sure that this track is good to go to inspect and repair the track and reach a man to fix any divots or damage that may have been created from any crashes and or in, in that Madison. So once our awesome track crew finishes up, we will get back to You always have to hedge your bets with these races, but you can see see furrowed brows and concerned faces on commissaires' faces. You always wonder if uh, they spotted something that might need a change, but for now, we get ready for top level match sprinting. We'll start with the bronze medal race. There is Sarom. The low angle shot up to the racers. And now, ladies and gentlemen, to the Sarom, the 27 year old from Malaysia, out of the Johor province. Southeast of the capital of Kuala Lumpur against Matthew Richardson, who already has many, many accomplishments to brag about in his 24 years. We talked yesterday about gaining in confidence with the Kieran win. Not able to be atop the podium today. Here we go. This is the and they're off. Three laps, best two of three for a bronze medal here in Milton. Richardson leading things out. Sarom. Snuggled up very close behind there. When you're going that fast, there's not much of a draft to worry about. You always wonder, I always wonder what they must be thinking about in both positions, looking in front, looking behind. What are you going to do next? Sarom goes up high, weaves down low. Richardson watching him every step of the way. Sarom now. Perhaps wanting to go to the front, not finding an opening. Richardson doing a very good job of taking away any opportunity. They are going to come up to the bell, and they are going to floor it now. Richardson leading things around. Sarom not really making much of a dent in his lead. Richardson powering to the line, and he will comfortably take this. Race number one. like last night when his Kieran win, when he had open track in front of him. It's gonna take some doing to try to beat him from getting there first. 1-0 Australia. We'll see him in just a little bit. to the line, and give them the opportunity, and he will gladly take it. Born in Maidstone in the UK, in England. Moved to Australia, and he was a child, and Australia is home. And now race one for gold. Nicholas Paul, the man from Gasparillo, Next up, this Trinidad. Is the 
and Mateusz Rudik from Owawa in Poland. Just checking the geography, Owawa is uh, in sort of the southwest corner of Poland, close to Wroclaw. Same thing here, best two of three. Last night in the women's match sprints. Grandstand finish for gold. Goes to three races. Kelsey Mitchell with the hometown crowd. They give her a boost. She picked up the win. It's Paul who leads out race number one. He's 24, Rudik 27. have to get over that halfway line if they want to think about a track stand. A bit of a hop by Paul, but keeping the momentum forward. Weaving up and down, Paul taking the lower line right now. Lifting the bike up just a little bit. And Rudick now moves to the front. He decides that's enough of that. I'm going to lead to the front. But Paul thinks, oh yeah? I don't think so. He goes back around and already a lap and a half to go. And the sprint is off. Rudick decides now, now I go. He comes around to lead things to the bell. Paul now has to chase his way back around. He's going to get into that slipstream and right around the outside. Nicholas Paul is driving this one to the line. He takes race one. Rudick opening up the sprinting early. Paul was able to jump into that slipstream. Enjoy a bit of a draft, and then turn on the Jets. And power it to the line around the outside. 1-0, Trinidad and Tobago. And we will see these gentlemen once again in just a little bit. They'll look back. Rudick opens the taps early. Jumps around the outside. It doesn't phase that man right there, who's one race away from a Nations Cup gold medal. And we will shortly return to the women's omnium. And 24 riders are all sitting or standing around the track, waiting for the green light. A look updated at the standings. Katie Archibald, two wins out of two on 80 points. Micah Venderdoin and Anita Stenberg on 68. Reigning world champion Jennifer Valente on 64. But the elimination, always something of an unpredictable beast where even the best cyclists can find themselves in a position they don't want to be, boxed in on the inside, dangling off the back, and they find themselves eliminated early. Riders get back around. Martins 
of Portugal is the European elimination race champion, but she's not going to wear the European champion's jersey because that's the standalone elimination. This is part of the Omnium, and so that's why you see Katie Archibald in the European champion's jersey. She won the Omnium at the European Championships. There are a lot of champions jerseys in track cycling, all, or in cycling in general, all with their own rules. And if you did miss our elimination races on the first night and the elimination race last night for the men, I'll break it down. Every two laps, you'll hear the bell. That indicates the sprint lap. And on that lap, whoever is the last over the finish line, they get eliminated. Hence, elimination. Until all the way down, it comes down to essentially a two-up sprint over two laps. And a lot of times, the strategy comes into play where a rider has stayed out of trouble, stayed near the front, has plenty of energy left, and they can just lift the tempo that little bit, open up a bit of a sprint, and their opponent perhaps has been drifting near the back a few times, burning some energy early on, and they just do not match it. So, like in everything, in the Omnium and in this sport in general, a whole lot of variables, and we cannot really guess about what will happen until we see these riders take off. Mike Evander doing Doing one last lap around as the riders take their positions. Katie Archibald on the outside at the front as the current leader. Sort of in pole position, if you were. Just about ready to go. The other one you want to watch is right behind Archibald. There's Mike Van der Doen of the Netherlands. Jennifer Valente right behind her, up at the top of the track there. There's a quick glimpse of Anita Stenberg. She pulled the wool completely over my eyes and a lot of people's eyes here the other night in the elimination race. Dangerously near the back for a lot of the race avoided elimination several times and then just went on to win the whole thing. She said afterwards she uh, she wanted to play it safe a little bit early on. There she is. And see what the other riders were doing. And there are perks, of course, to sitting near the back. You do have to do that little bit more work, but you get to see the race unfold in front of you. And ideally, riders often want to be in one of the first couple riders near the front, out of danger, but she sort of through the form book right out the window. And you just heard the whistle. That is not the start of the race. When they come around, the gun will go. That's the start of the race. After that, then the bell, and that's the first sprint point. So a couple different sounds coming up. There's the gun. We are go. Everybody safely around the corner. And there is the first bell. So first elimination coming up. And right now, it is the South African rider, Kerry Yonker, hanging dangerously close to the back. But the Australian, Chloe Moran, is there well. But Moran now moving forward. And I'm not sure if Yonker has anywhere to go. She might be dangling off the back. And that looks to be the first elimination. Confirmation up on our board that is the first to go, and would you know, we have another sprint lap coming up. Lara Gillespie of Ireland now in trouble. Has to find an opening. She does make a surge. She does find an opening. It looks like the rider from Hong Kong, Saint Wing Lee. Does she survive? It's the Japanese rider, I believe. It is the Japanese rider. 
She wasn't able to Japan. stay in, and so Yumi Kajihara. Out relatively quickly, and Ryder from Hong Kong was near the back, and now she decides, I'm just gonna go play it safe and stay out of trouble now for a little while. And look, look who's back near the back. It's Anita Stenberg. She has to find an opening. She's actually putting in a big effort here. I'm not sure if she's gonna manage it. Living dangerously, and that is Stenberg. The elimin elimination champion from a few nights ago, potentially trying the same tactics. And she's not happy with herself there. The openings just were not there this time. And now Valente. The American hanging near the back. We could see a massive readjustment in the standings, but Valente calmly, oh so calmly, goes around the outside. And it's Amber Joseph who had a pretty impressive elimination race in Cairo, but she looks like she is the next to go. Amber Joseph of Barbados, 23-year-old. He's also not too happy with that. As I mentioned, I think she had a top 10 in the elimination last, last time out in Cairo. Another bell lap, and it's a lot of Kapeki now hanging out near the back. Alongside Maho Kakita of Rakuten K Dreams. And that might be who gets to go. Sarah Van Dam of Canada also in a precarious position. Decision in China. And there was a decision, the Chinese rider eliminated. That, that was a decision. And she dropped down into an area where she wasn't allowed to be. It's not why there was the decision to eliminate the Chinese rider, because I think Sarah Van Dam was the last over the line. Now Van Dam saying, yeah, I don't like being uh, not safe like that. I'm moving forward. It is our Australian rider, Chloe Moran, the latest eliminated. There is another bell. The rider from New Zealand in trouble. That's Michaela Drummond. She's trying to get around Kakita. Everybody spaced out here. Valente also hanging out near the back, but she will be safe. It's going to be close here. Is the rider from Greece the next to go? Argiro Milaki. Slap of the handlebars there. Sometimes you just, your legs might feel good, but you don't have the opening and you're yet caught out. That's why this race is particularly unpredictable. Canadian Maggie Coles Lister at the front right now. Katie Archibald, she's drifting near the back. This is trouble for the European champion. Does she do enough? It looks like she does. Is Maho Kakita, Rakuten K Dreams, Archibald. Archibald now moving forward. A little too close for comfort for her. Another bell lap coming up. It's that rider from Hong Kong, Tse Wing Lee. And the Irish rider, Lara Gillespie, both in trouble. And looks like Lee is trying to move forward. Michaela Drummond of New Zealand also potentially boxed in there on the inside. And that's the one who's going to go. Number 281 in New Zealand. 281 in New Zealand has been eliminated. Down to 15. And another bell. Still hanging off near the back there, Tseung Lee, potentially taking a book out of Anita Stenberg's book, but uh, by just avoiding elimination that little bit every time. Leyland Tutenberg could be boxed in on the inside. She has an opportunity. She slides up through the middle a little bit, and it is Leyland Tutenberg. Number 269 in Germany. That's what happens. You see that opening on the inside, and you see it's obviously shorter to go on the track. But then there's the danger. You get squeezed in. You can't go anywhere. 
And the people who are able to get outside are the ones who survive. The rider from Hong Kong, Lee, really starting to feel it. She's making a lot of efforts just to maintain contact. She's found one more burst to potentially stave off elimination once more. Gillespie on the outside. It's going to be very close. And it's the rider from Czechia, Petra Sefcikova. And there is a trend, the riders on the inside. A lot of riders in danger out the back. Then they go around the outside, and it's the ones in the middle who miss out. And there's Lee again, almost giving that little bit of space to perhaps look where she wants to go. Sarah Van Dam drifting back, but decides to go forward. Lee now. Not able to close back in. Is she able to do it again? I think so. And it's Ukena Lararte. The Spanish rider. Is going to have to settle for 13th place in the elimination. And now Valente. Riding tail gun. Now she moves up at Sarah Van Dam living dangerously at the back. She now moves forward, and Lara Gillespie, who's been able to stay away from danger just enough, she's struggling now, and it's, it could be Portugal. It is Maria Martins, the European elimination champion. And that trend of being caught on the inside continues. Martins, the European elimination champion, not able to find that sort of success this time. She's 12th here. Now, who do, who's stuck on the inside that we might want to pay attention to this time? Finally, the luck runs out for Tse Wing Lee from Hong Kong. A valiant effort from her, but she's out by a decision there. Another bell, Sarah Van Dam, the Canadian, the young 21-year-old rider. She has to make a move. She's trying to get around Micah Van Der Doen, and once again, we have to walk, watch who could be boxed in on the inside. And Van Dam, it's going to be close. Number two, nine, zero, Switzerland. And it's the two, Swiss nine, rider zero, on the inside. That's Aline Seitz. And it seems that inside line is nothing but trouble. And the riders who decide to keep to the outside are the ones finding success. Van Dam now riding on the inside. On another elimination lap, she's moving forward, but at some point you just run out of room. This time she might stay out of trouble. And it's Micah Vanderdoin from the Netherlands. She finishes ninth. There will be a good readjustment of the standings here. A lot of Kopecky now at the back. But I watch Lara Gillespie from Ireland. She's on the inside line there. Does she have anywhere to go? At the moment, she does. Elisa Balsamo, Valente, and Gillespie. There's just a wall in front of her. Where does she go? And sure enough, that inside line. You just run out of space. You run out of time. You run out of luck. And we're down to seven. Canadian riders staying near the front. Kapeki and Valente struggling a little bit. They have a gap to close. Is this just, is this savvy experience from the two? Sure looks like it. Sarah Van Dam now the latest on the inside line. She might be doing just enough. As she found a way through, it could be one of the Canadians, and it is Sarah Van Dam. 21 year old though. A lot of career still ahead of her. And we know we'll be seeing her plenty. 
And it's Valente and Capecchi still again. Is it a game? Is it deliberate? This time, the inside line for Maggie's Coles Lister has space in front of her, so she gladly moved into that. And it looks like her rider from Poland will be the next to say, I've got nothing left. Daria Pikulik will take sixth place. Down to five. All very good cyclists. Coles Lister, I believe, has a Champions League elimination race win. Valente hits the front. No more games, no more playing near the back. And Coles Lister now, though, she has that inside line. There's not a lot of place to go. Kopecki's on the outside. Coles Lister on the inside. And here we come. Who's the next to go? It's Coles Lister. And the other Canadian in fifth place. She'll get a bump up the standings, though, with that. We're down to four. And the word I would say is elite. The European champion, world champion, world champion on the road, world Madison champion, and multiple classics winner in Lada Kopecki. So all kinds of winners, but Valente saying, that's it for me. I'll see you in the points race. Valente has several things to think about, not only the Omnium. We don't know what uh, kind of bumps and bruises she's nursing from yesterday. And now it's three. And Balsamo might be saying, that's it for me. Yes, she will. And so now it's a three-lap race, essentially, between Katie Archibald who will want to go three for three, and a lot of Kopecky. How's this for an elite twosome at the end? Archibald continuing to do Katie Archibald-like things. Kopecky, just her shadow right now. They're weaving side to side. There's the official elimination. They still have to come around to get the bell up and down the track, weaving one way, then another. Now Kopecky tries to go. Archibald up to the task. She raises the tempo, and that has just cracked a lot of Kopecky. Three for three, Katie Archibald. It's essentially three quarters of a victory lap. And you just run out of superlatives to talk about this rider from Great Britain. A fist pump, another win for the world champion. A lot of Kopecky a valiant second place. And there will be a readjustment of some of the rankings, but one name will remain on top. It will be another 40 points for Katie Archibald of Great Britain. Average speed of that race, just a shade over 48 kilometers an hour. Your top three, Archibald, Kapeki, Balsamo. And right behind them, the world champion, Jennifer Valente in fourth place. Let's look at the winner yet again. She is very good at this track cycling thing. Look back at the race, Anita Stenberg. The tactic didn't pay off that time. And that inside line taking many, many riders. Is a smile or a grimace? She just enjoys herself out there. Kapeki, she tried. She tried to raise the tempo to see what Archibald had left, and Archibald said, I have plenty. Now that's a smile, a victorious smile. There's confirmation of the updated standings. 120 for Katie Archibald, a lot of Kapecki on 100, Valente in third with 98. We'll see what happens in the points race. Archibald with a pretty comfortable cushion right now.
Now we return race two in the men's individual sprint. Bronze medal race, Matthew Richardson of Australia. Mohamed Shah Ferdos Shadom for bronze. Richardson leading 1-0. Looking to add a bronze medal to his two golds on the weekend. They switch sides from the first race. Shadom leads from the inside. See what games these two decide to play on this first lap. Track stand or no. He's looking to send this one into overtime. Richardson moving up on the outside. There's definitely not going to be a track stand this time. Not going to be a complete stop. Already picking things up. He will come up to see two to go. The weaving begins. Richardson maybe trying to go to the front. Shadow saying, not yet. I'm not going to let you go. More weaving inside, outside. Right, Richardson so now finds a lane on the outside, not pushing it just yet. Sharom using that inner line. He's starting a sprint pretty darn early. Richardson now says, okay, I'm gone. And down he goes around the corner. And just that is it. Sharom knows when he's beaten Richardson. Celebrates the bronze medal. It was almost done as soon as the sprint started. Sharon knew I've been outfoxed by a very savvy and strong cyclist. There's Matthew Richardson, 2 0, claims bronze in the individual sprint. There are a whole lot of riders will be challenging this event in just a few weeks time, a few weeks, a few months in Glasgow, the World Championships, Jeffrey Hochland, Harry Lavraisen, Mikhail Yakovlev, all not here, but they'll just make a, for a very deep field. Matthew Richardson, always a threat for gold. Today, he finishes in third place. These two men also want to be mentioned among the favorites. Nicholas Paul leading 1-0 on Mateusz Rudik from Poland. Rudik has a 2019 sprint bronze medal. He already knows he'll have his best result of the Nations Cup season. Fourth in Cairo, 10th in Jakarta. He's guaranteed at least a silver, but he wants a gold. Nicholas Paul wants to prevent that. 24-year-old bronze yesterday in Kieran. And Rudik, a face etched in stone, not giving away any expression. Paul. Same thing. Three laps underway. Rudik All right. All the leads this one off. They go right down. This one. Just above a walking pace to start it. No track stands in the bronze medal race. This one looks like it could be a little bit more likely as they ride up the track. A stare down. Paul watching Rudik. Rudik returning the favor. Rudik wants to force a decider. Nicholas Paul, one race from a gold medal. Right down on the blue paint there. Now the tempo ratchets up. Now Rudik starts to go. Still two laps to go. 
This one could be another long, long sprint. Paul closes the gap. They come up to the bell. Rudick still in front. Now they both hit the hit, hit the full gas here. Paul going around the outside. Rudick matching him right now. He does have the inside line. We'll see if that goes to his advantage. It's Rudick. It's Paul. It's Paul. It's goal. Confirmation, Nicholas Paul of Trinidad and Tobago wins gold in the Nations Cup here in Milton. Wins sprints. Very, very strong man in the match sprint format. 2019 Pan Am champion, silver at the 2022 Commonwealth Games. Rudick knows when he's been beaten by a stronger rider on the day. We always love to see the appreciation between the two. Side by side coming around the turn, but Paul having closed that gap does just enough. But we'll see both of these men again soon. Final results. Paul Rudick, Richardson, the medal winners. Sadom of Malaysia in fourth. Nick Wamas, the Canadian, finishing in fifth after losing his quarterfinal. Coming back out now, staying with the sprinters. It's the women's Kieran finals. First up, the classification race for 7 to 12. Kelsey Mitchell, Lowry Thomas, Medium Vetche, Cho Sun Young, Yuli, Ver er, Yuli Verdugo, and Marlena Carvaca. Mitchell gold yesterday in the sprint. The other two people who are on the podium with her, they'll race in the gold medal final. From Mexico, Yuli Verdugo. There's Carvaca. She's locked in at the best Nations Cup finish. There's Veche. Fourth in the sprint in Cairo recently. 26 year old. And there's Lowry Thomas. 24 year old from Wales. Used often in team sprints, but with Britain not sending Emma Finucan and Sophie Capewell, she gets to ride Kieran and Spr Kieran here. That British team, strength in numbers, very, very, very deep. The Derny comes around, quick refresher. Three laps behind the rapidly accelerating e-bike. And the bike pulls off. And then a three lap sprint to the finish. This is for seventh through twelfth. And it's Thomas taking things up the front, getting right up behind the Derny. Vecce right behind her. Carvaca, Mitchell. Cho. Just the one race in McKeeran. No margin McKeeran for error. You don't get right another opportunity like in the individual the sprint. Sprinters, because it's a short distance. You like what you see here. Kieran, massively races. popular over in the Japan. A lot for gambling. Occasionally there are some foreign riders who go over and get to ride in those events and only imagine the thrill of doing that kind of thing. 2020 slash 2021 Olympic host country. 
Now it's Thomas. The journey's off. Inside three laps to go. Carvaca saying, I'm going to start picking things up now. She did that earlier, but it was a bit too early and was caught. She's not going all out just yet. Now Mitchell comes around. Just bringing the power, seeing who can come with her. There's the bell. The only person who can right now is Cho Sun Yang. Kelsey Mitchell leading things around, and now it's almost a two-up sprint for seventh place. Mitchell with the inside line, and she is just going to bring this one home, looking very comfortable for seventh place. Mitchell Cho Sun Yang. One, two. Parvaka third to pick up ninth. Verdugo, Vecce, Thomas, 10th through 12th. What a great end to the ride here in Milton. Well, it doesn't end with a medal, but the home country favorite ends with a victory. She said last night that she needed that individual sprint win. And then, of course, you'll find any measure of confidence when you uh, pick up a race win in any race, even if it is for seventh place. That one done and dusted. The top six come out to the track. Confirmation of the results. Kelsey Mitchell, Cho Sun Young, Mar Marlena Carvaca, Yuli Verdugo, Miriam Vecce, and Lowry Thomas. It's the end of a hard weekend's work for the Albertan. There's your starting list for the gold medal race. The home crowd fans will want to see Lorianne Genet. Got a lot of talent here. Martha Bayona, yesterday's silver medalist in the sprint. Veronica Jabornikova, Katie Marchant, Alessia, Alessa Katrina Propster, and Luz Daniela Gathiola. All about to line up. Marchant. Has a bronze medal from the 2016 Olympics in the individual sprint. Jeanne, bronze in this event in Tokyo. Let's look at Jabornikova. 22 year old from Czechia. 18th in the individual sprint. There is Katie Marchant from Leeds. Germany, Alexa Lisa Katrina Kopster, the 22-year-old from Hetchingen, Southwest Germany. This is Daniela Gaffiola, looking for her second medal. Martha Bayona, for her second medal. And Jeanne, hoping she's peaking at the right time. 13th in Jakarta. Journey still on the far side of the track. Given the sign to go ahead. In the second round, Janae sat right up behind the bike. We'll see if she opts to do that. She does have that inside line. bit of space right now, but she's going to tuck right in there. One lap before riders can start to move around amongst themselves. Can't get in front of the bike. Just another reminder of that. Only when it pulls off are they released. It's Janae in front. Bayona. Gaffiola, Propster, and Marchant, and Jabornikova. One more lap for the Derny. They get up to speed. Everybody's comfortable staying where they are. Nobody wants to move just yet. 
Already a little bit of space here as the dirty pulls off. Already a little bit strung out. It's Janae still in front. Marchant picking things up. Kropster going around the outside. Janae preserving that inside line. She now tucks in behind the German. Gaffiola trying to also move up and around. Two laps to go. Bayona going around the outside. I'm not sure if Janae's boxed in there on the inside. She does not have much of an opening. They come up to the bell. It's still Kropster leading the way. Bayona behind her. Janae in third. Here comes Gaffiola. It's going to be a drag out sprint to the line. It's still Kropster leading this one home. And it's going to be the German taking gold. Janae Silver. And I believe Bayona third. Alessa Katrina Propster, 22 years old. The federal police officer takes gold here in Milton. Here's a look at our silver medalist, at least unofficially. I always wait for the official confirmation. German cyclist, partly named after a Canadian speed skater, picks up the gold medal here in Ontario. That was the moment. She went outside and was more than comfortable to hold everybody off. Just open track in front of her and had enough of a sprint to hold everybody off and celebrate a well-earned victory. And as the confirmation of her gold medal, I do see commissaires looking at a screen. Janae, a silver medal. A second one for her. She picked up a silver in the team sprint on the opening night. Martha Bayona, a second medal for her. A bronze to go along with Sprint Silver. Still a few screens being looked at down there. The benefit of having this elevated position, but there are the results. Alessa Katrina Propster, Lorian Genet, Martha Bayona, your podium, Marchant, Jabornikova, and Gaffiola, fourth through sixth. And then on down again, there were a lot of qualifiers this morning just to get to the second round of the Kieran, which we saw earlier this evening. 50 countries, several hundred riders represented here in Milton this weekend. It's quite an event to put together. Finishing off the Nations Cup calendar that started a few months ago in Jakarta, Indonesia, continued in Cairo, and then wrapped up here. And we do have one more race to come this evening. It is the conclusion to the Omnium. But first, we will have some medals to give away in just a few moments. The men's Madison. See two and a half of the teams down there. And there we go, the second French riders. Now it looks like all six athletes are now there. A 
will now give away those medals. The medal ceremony for the Tissot UCI Track Nations Cup Milton Men's Marathon. La cérémonie de remise des médailles de la Coupe des Nations Piste sur Pussy de Milton Madison Homme. The medals and gifts will be presented by. Les médailles et cadeaux seront présentés par le maire de Milton, the mayor of Milton, Gordon Cran. Winners of the bronze medal, Médaille de bronze, La France, France! Thomas Gouda and Benjamin Thomas. Winners of the silver medal, Médaille d'Argent, Representant Beat Cycling Club, representing Beat Cycling Club. Yori Havik and Vincent Hopizak. So UCI Track Nations Cup Men's Madison Gold Medalists. Les médailles d'or Madison Homme de la Coupe des Nations Piste UCI Tissot. La Portugal, Portugal. Ivo Alves Olivieri and Yuri Lechao. Acknowledge all of our medalists. Vol Medaille! Certainly love the emotion from that Portuguese side. They snuck away and got a second lap on the field. And we were perhaps paying attention to crashed by the British side. Such is the nature of Madison. You lose focus on one thing on one track in the moment and then something else happens and they got that second lap. That proved decisive. Picture with that Portuguese flag. Ahead of France and the two Dutch riders from Beat Cycling, Beat Cycling Club. They get their medals and their gifts. This bag of coffee. And we are going to send things down. And we are going to hear from our winners in the men's Madison. Here with our men's Madison winners from Portugal, the only team to lap the field twice in your Madison. Was that part of a plan going in to lap the field as many times or did you want to sprint? Yeah, we know uh, if we want to win, uh, we will not do it sprinting. We want to take the lap. And yeah, once we make the first lap, we do it immediately the second because the field was, was broken in pieces and was the, exactly the perfect moment to, to do it. And uh, as a team, with a teammate like this, make things easier. <laughs> it seems like a lot of pride for your team, wearing the flag, celebrating with your team. What was the feeling going through your head on the podium? 
Yeah, it's a, it's a really good feeling today because uh, it's been a, a tough uh, qualification and uh, now with this win uh, we feel more confident and uh, being in uh, such a high level race and uh, be able to win, it's, it's incredible for us. More racing for you two together this season? Yeah, probably the World Championship and uh, yeah, that's probably the, the next race and uh, we see, we see uh, each other in the road race as well. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. It's all part of the plan. They knew they weren't going to win the sprints, and they took advantage of an opportunity when the field was fractured, and they got that second lap, and it ultimately proved decisive. There's Elisa Balsamo saying hi to everybody. She has a points race coming up. And of course, a lot of racing on the road to come this year. It's a long shot. What do you do when a camera's sitting on you that long and you're just sitting down? Anyway, the things we think about. One more race to come this evening. And it will be a conclusion to that women's omnia. And there we are, the, the points race. race Not only the last race of this evening, the last race of this Nations Cup stop in Milton. The points race. Expect the unexpected. And Katie Archibald has built up a pretty fair advantage in things so far. There's as it stands. 120 points, a lot of Kapeki 100, Valente 98, and then on down. However, unlike those previous events where the winner would get 40 points straight up, any points earned here count towards that standing. So, every 10 laps, there is a sprint. Every 10 laps, the winner gets five points, three, two, and one. And the final sprint, double points. And so, as I said, expect the unexpected. Katie Archibald has a way of finding out, finding her way to win often. And we'll see if she can survive the chaos that is the points race. 20 kilometers. There's Amber Joseph of Barbados. Ninth in the Omnium in Cairo was, was Joseph. 17th in the points race at the Commonwealth Games. So races on the road and there's the person you're going to be want to watch it. That makes sense. There's the person you're going to want to watch. I know her teammates are going to keep an eye on her. Katie Archibald with a 20 point cushion. So in a race where you just really have to keep an eye on your closest rivals, she has some points to play with. There's second place. And when in second place is Lada Kapeki, I guess you could say no lead is safe. Here's Leia Lynn Teutenberg. Right from Hong Kong. Tsai Wing Lee. As we've gotten used to seeing, they'll form up based on their ranking. So here's the defending world champion, Jennifer Valente, taped, to, taped together, essentially. She's gotten beat up this weekend. A couple times down, shredding up her USA skin suit. Lucky that uh, she has a world champion skin suit for the Omnium to fall back on. She'll uh, undoubtedly spend some time recovering. One tough rider. There's Archibald, 29 years old, from Chertsey in Surrey in England, that's southwest of London. Although she uh, is educated in Glasgow, so we'll feel very much at home in the World Championships. Valente right behind her. Gold in the Omnium at the Olympics as well is Valente, and that's why you see the little gold stripe on her helmet. 
Another cool thing about cycling is that when someone's an Olympic champion in a discipline, they get, they, they're able to adorn either their bike or their helmet with, or, or somewhere with, with some gold. It sounds like there's a reshuffling in the Kira, and we'll get that to you in just a minute. It is up on the screen here. Uh, so I'll get to that in just a moment. We'll get to the start of the points race first. Mike of Andrew Dunn. Of Alsimo. Here's a look at Maggie Cole's lister representing Star Trek Cycling, not wearing the Canadian red, white, black, and light blue. Thomas Air walking through to make sure everybody is where they need to be. Canadians are protesting a result, and we will explain that in just a minute. It's quite an animated discussion there, and they are off in the points race. And now this has to do with the Kieran. They've announced it over the PA that both Luz Gathiola from Mexico and Lorianne Genet have been relegated. And so that would bump. Janae off the podium. So our updated Kieran podium. We'll see if the Canadians have one last appeal or if there's any hope in, in changing the decision. Uh, Alessa, Katrina Propster, Martha Bayoni, and Katie Merchant. The podium. We'll confirm that once they all get onto the podium. We'll let the any appeals or discussions get sorted out. The points race is underway. So same old thing, five points for the winner of every sprint, double points on the end. And as I explained, these points count towards the standings. So Katie Archibald gets shut out of four sprints, all won by Lotta Kopecky, then we'd be tied. And of course, if Lotta Kopecky gains a lap, they would be tied. So I could list the variables, but they would be too many. Already, the tempo being raised a little bit. Riders strung out. But so far, nobody willing to take the effort. Of course, you could always see riders who just want to gain points, just want to gain the standings, have an admirable finish, get their country some ranking points for the Olympics. But Katie Archibald at the front, she is dictating things. There is one jersey she's going to be watching for first, and that's Lotta Kopecky, the light blue, black, yellow, and orange of Belgium. She will be marking any one of her close rivals. She'll also be looking out for the rainbow bands of the world champion, Jennifer Valente. There could be some riders who launch some attack who are close to the podium, but not so close to Archibald but she might let them go. It's all about picking your battles. You only have so many matches to burn, as they say. And so you don't want to waste too much energy going after a person who's trying to move from eighth or seventh to third. So Archibald comfortably in front of both Capacchi and Valente right now. Not the fastest of starts. Three laps to go until the next sprint. That is when you can expect to see things start to change shape. It's all just one big group right now. There is Kopecky on the front. 
still too early for her to go. Well, it's actually a rider from South Africa, Kerry Yonker. There's our top four in your top left corner. Archibald, Kapeki, Valente, Balsamo. Now there's the bell. Now the riders get out of the saddle. Valente and Archibald are shoulder to shoulder. Micah van der Doen is also there. And Kapeki missed this one. And there's five points right away for Katie Archibald. So a 20 point lead over second place. She still wants to consolidate that advantage ever a racer. Archibald, Jolly Yu, Jennifer Valente, and Aline Seitz. So we'll update the standings and already a little bit of movement there. Archibald 125, and Valente moves into a second place tie with 100, and Balsamo 94. Sarah Van Dam, the Canadian, moves to the front. Now they're strung out all along the back backstretch. That first sprint has already shaken things up. And Archibald now, those four in the front are not terribly close to her right now. So she's happy to see them go. However, on a Kapeki potentially trying to chase things down, she now needs to start picking up points. from Greece on the front, Arguro Milaki. Sort of the, the exhale after the sprint again. It's still just line astern strung out. Now it's bunching up a little bit more, so not the fastest tempo. And they'll undoubtedly start picking things up again in time for the next sprint. Australia taking her pull. We'll see if there's going to be a further change to the standings in this sprint. Teutenberg and Drummond, the Kiwi rider, trying to break. Maggie Coles Lister trying to join them, as is Amber Joseph and Daria Pikulik. These are all five riders that our leaders could conceivably let go. Not really a danger right away, but the opportunist, Archibald, trying to join them. Balsamo saying someone else has got to work. Sarah Van Dam now charged with chasing things down. And if Archibald joins them, I'd say look out. There's the bell. It is a point lap. Archibald, a chance to get another five points on her rivals. She is going right by Joseph, chasing down Cole's lister. It's not going, it is going to be Archibald, I think, perhaps. It's a photo finish for Piccoli. Maggie Cole's lister with the third place there. They're still trying to sort that photo. And it is five more for Archibald. And so, with her rivals not getting anything, she now adds to her lead. She now has a 30-point margin. Still that tie for second. And is Archibald saying, I'm going to try to go now? Why not? Here comes the sprint. It was Pikulik leading. Archibald gets her with a last gasp. A little bit of a bike throw there. It looks like this one could potentially form up. There's the photo finish. And that's just for a sprint, the second sprint in a, a points race. That was close, goodness. Kikalik now trying to go alone. I believe Katie Archibald has taken every single top point so far. Top points in the first three events. The first two sprints as well. Just about maximum points.
Another five riders off the front. Archibald not pursuing this one. She's confident the other riders will chase it down. Right emerald green kit, Lara Gillespie. Sarah Van Dam accelerating on the inside. Being chased by Maho Kakita of Rakuten K Dreams. Off the front, coming up to the next sprint point. There's a look at our leader, 130 points, Katie Archibald. Closest competitors, both on 100. A lot of Kopecky, Jennifer Valente. Two more laps until our next sprint point. And these five riders now could be contesting it. This could actually be the first point Katie Archibald drops this entire day. Although, never say never. There is the bell. It's Ukena Lararte of Spain leading things around. 24 years old, out of the Basque country. Lararte, Sarah Van Dam, the Canadian, coming around to take maximum points. And Gillespie, I believe, got second. That is the K. Stenberg and Lararte, third and fourth. And for the first time today, Katie Archibald shut out of the points. She's still in a very comfortable position, though. We'll see if this five try to keep pushing on together. We have a good advantage over the straightaway. There's the updated standings. Valente Van Dam in 10th now on 69. No movement atop of the leaderboard. Archibald, 130. Capecchi and Valente both on 100. Balsamo, 94 in fourth. And the chase is starting to pull back this group of five. They did manage to get 20 points. That would bump them up the standings. But Balsamo now leading the pursuit. There's Kopecky now. Coming up the inside, Maria Martins. 2021 Omnium Euro 23 gold medalist is Maria Martins. And an attack now from the Japanese rider, Yumi Kachihara. She's trying to go solo. And there is no chase coming from the bunch. Kajihara currently in 19th place on 27 points. So a lot of the riders are thinking up the points right now, watching their closest rivals. The battles are between them, not between the rider who's broken away. She has well closing in on half a lap. I'll say 20 points is getting ever more likely. The Peloton still bunched up, although there is an attack now coming from Teutenberg. Not much of a reaction still. Kajihara, if she gets this blob here, she will get 20 points. But she'll also want to get five points first. Leilin Teutenberg, the second rider on the road. So she's in position to get second in the sprint point. And uh, we'll watch it here. Kajihara, perhaps taking a little bit back off. She gets five points. Now she's going to aim for 20. However, the sprint is on in the field. Leia Lynn Teutenberg is hanging on for second. And let's see. It's Pikulik and Gillespie in third and fourth. 
So not a huge movement in the overall standings from those points positions with 39 laps to go. There it is, Kajihara, Tutenberg, Pinkerleek, and Gillespie. But after that sprint, the field is sitting back up a little bit, and it's another opportunity for Kakida to close around and get those 20 points. And then she rounds the turn. She has the back of the peloton in sight. 20 points. Where would that move Kajihara? Up to about 47. It would move her into the top 15 anyway. And now she is starting to lose ground as there's a sudden motivation in the peloton. But if they don't stay steady, there is still the opportunity. So it's up to her to keep pushing as much as she can. It's about a quarter of a lap. Yumi Kajihara. It's just agonizingly, tantalizingly in front there. And it's just a matter of half a straightaway there for Kajihara. Some of the Japanese riders cheering her on. You hear it in the stands. She is coming up also to another sprint point. And at this point, and at this point, I think you just want to get the 20 points and not save it and risk it for another five. Just that close. That would be a boost if she certainly gets the 20 points. She's just a couple laps away from doing it, but starting to finish. She is really certainly, right now. certainly the sentimental favorite to pick up 20 points. I think she's losing ground again. The South African rider in front of her is already a lap down. So that won't count towards the lap, the potential 20 points. But now she has clear space to the back of the field. They are all bunched up. Archibald's just sitting there at the top of the track watching everybody. There is the bell. Kakita in line for at least another five points. And she's closing up yet again. We'll see if there is a sprint coming from the field. And she might just be seeing the lights go out. And now a lot of Kapeki, Valenti following. And Katie Archibald there as well. Two, three, and four. With the sudden infusion of pace, Kakita is visibly slowing. And there, Kapeki finally takes some points. Second, Valente third, Archibald fourth. That battle for second place now heating up. I don't know if they've given up the ghost of catching Archibald because she's monitoring every single move. But Kapeki now moves into second place all by herself. Archibald 131, Kapeki 103, Valente 102, Balsamo still technically alive on 94, and Kakita knows the pursuit is done. The attempt to get 20 points so close so many times. Now she has to see if she can just hang on to the back of this group. The legs are tired. Now it's Gillespie off the front, but it's not going to stick Sarah Van Dam down to the bottom of the track. She already has won one of the sprint points. Archibald, is, is, is that a smile or a grimace? And she might already know that she's likely not to be caught at this point in time. Let's see. She has a 28-point advantage. It's going to be, it would be very, very tough. So you would probably need a lap and then some help. But Archibald, every lap ticking down, down to 26, brings her that much closer to another Nations Cup gold medal. She was on the team pursuit team that, that won on the first evening of medals. Micah Venderdoen trying to attack, and Archibald saying, sure, I'll watch you. Valente, third wheel right now. Maho, Ka Maho Kakita, yes in second wheel. And my apologies, the Japanese rider for so long was Yumi Kajihara. I have to give her the respect she deserves. Yumi Kajihara, the Japanese rider who was off for so long. 
Kakita is with Rakuten K-Dreams. Now it's Maria Martins. Off the front, Maggie Coles Lister, the Canadian for Star Trek Cycling. Chasing her down a little bit. Star Trek Cycling is uh, actually a program in the U.S. at uh, teaching kids in New York City on riding bikes. Hank Coles Lister representing them, and it all bunches up once again. No laps gained so far in this race. Yumi Kajihara tried, and they will come around for another bell this lap. With 21 laps to go, Balsamo now. She isn't interested in this one. A lot of Kapeki trying to get a silver medal. Cole's Lister following behind as well. And Jennifer Valente in the quest for silver, not where she wants to be. It's Balsamo, Kapeki, and Cole's Lister. And Micah Vanderdoin from the Netherlands in fourth place. A couple riders trying to see if, hey, maybe we'll sneak away as the riders, riders sit up a bit from that sprint, but that attack is not going anywhere. We will update the standings here. Katie Archibald, 131. Kapeki, 106. It's going to be updated one second. That is, there we are. And Valente on 102. Lea Lynn Tutenberg on the attack. She is currently in 14th place with 39 points. She has about a quarter of a lap right now. 20 would be a nice shot in the arm to her own ranking. Archibald almost watching every single move, even if it doesn't relate to her, but so long as she keeps Balsamo, Valente, Capecchi behind her, she's happy. Now there's not much of a chase, and Leia Lynn Tutenberg on the attack. Closing in on half a lap. I'll say she's got that right now. And it looks like it's the Greek rider, Arguro Milaki, leading the charge. So it's, it's people near the bottom of the, of the standings at the front of the peloton. And so you can say that. Uh, is lacking in some cohesion, but Tutenberg in event four of a very long Omnium, the legs are certainly feeling it, so the spirit likely is willing to try to get 20 laps. The body might not be able to match that spirit. She has another opportunity here. Still a half lap, just about exactly on the front of that pack. They're Really no motivation, but they will start to raise the tempo in a very short period of time. As they see 13 laps, the penultimate sprint is coming up. And another time, this could be another time where it just gets so close. Yumi Kajihara tried to gain a lap. It came just a few meters short, essentially. Leia Lynn Tutenberg now really starting to close the gap, but she will get the bell. She's odds on to get five points, but that sound might spur a reaction in the field. There is now Kopecki, as I mentioned. The field picks things up. And you're always watching for, after that light blue jersey in the battle for second place, look for the world champions bands. Valente's not far behind, but she's on the inside line. There's limited room of amount of space she can go. Tutenberg gets full points. And I think Kapeki came third. Indeed, she did. Balsamo in fourth. We'll check the standings again at Tutenberg. Tutenberg. Seeing her lead diminish. And a glutton for punishment. You beat Kajihara off again, trying to attack. She's got some help from Gillespie. And uh, I think her legs quickly said to her, what are you doing? Archibald, give me some math 
Dukeberg I'll say she's back to about half a lap on the back of the peloton, but she's running out of time. Eight laps to go. And now the gap is really diminishing. Tutenberg might be seeing the end of her foray off the front. This last sprint reminder, double points. 10, 6, 4, and 2. And in the battle for second place, Katie Archibald has all but locked up the gold medal here now. And barring any late, late drama, Katie Archibald, gold medal here in the women's omnium. And the field is bunching up again, Tutenberg. Tutenberg is just sort of dangling off the front, suffering in agony. Another attack from the field. Martins and Larate, Portugal and Spain. And Tutenberg, you see the pain. And they make the catch with four laps to go. So shaping up potentially to be a bunch sprint. But now Archibald, I'm not done yet. You've seen plenty of me in my European champion's jersey. She's just upping the tempo. It's gonna be a race for the silver medal. Valente and Capecchi in the race for silver. Balsamo not far behind in fourth. Down to two laps to go. This is the race, the Azzurri Italy, the light blue of Capecchi and the rainbow jersey of the world champion Valente. That's the battle for the second and third place medals. Now they're opening things up. Archibald has gold all but locked down and the race for silver and bronze is right there at the front. It's Balsamo leading things up. Here comes Piccoli to try to sort of mess with proceedings. It's Balsamo who's gonna take this sprint to the line. Here comes Valente though with the late surge. It looks like Balsamo, Valente, Kikulik, and Maggie Cole's Lister came up to pick up that fourth spot. And we are going to have a reshuffling here. We know who's on top, it's that woman right there. Great Britain's Katie Archibald of Great Britain now has a chance to celebrate yet another gold medal. Uh, we, will, we haven't updated our monitor just yet, but our top three. And that concludes our racing here, folks. Want to stick around for the award ceremony? Archibald, 131. Balsamo, 110. There's a look at Jennifer Valente, 108. Six points at the end, bumped her up. Tied with Capecchi on 108, but they have Valente in the third place right now. Look back at this final race. The Katie Archibald show comes to an end. Dominant. But we expect that from her. Sarah Van Dam, the Canadian, taking one of the sprint points. There's a lot of Kopecky. And Elisa Balsamo. That was the sprint to the line. Balsamo winning that. Just ahead of Valente and Pikulik. And once again, a very happy Katie Archibald celebrating yet another victory. This time, Nations Cup gold in Milton, Ontario. And we will see her in just a little bit on the podium once again. And we will go down and give out and some more medals. For the Tissot UCI Track Nations Cup Milton Women's Kieran. La cérémonie de remise des médailles de la Coupe des Nations Pistisso UCI de Milton Kieran Femme. The medals and games will be presented by Lily Dunley, Cadeau, Summer Princess, Femme, Le Maire de Milton, Mayor of Milton, Gordon France. Winner of the bronze medal, representing Great Britain.
medal, representing Colombia. Medaille d'argent, representant la Colombie, Marta Bayona. So UCI Track Nations Cup Women's Kieran Gold Medalist representing Germany. La médaille d'or Kieran Femme de la Coupe des Nations Piste UCI Tissot représente l'Allemagne. Alessa Katrina Propster. the same as the one that crossed the line. And that is because there were some late relegations afterward. We'll take a look at it. And there it is, Lorianne Genet. She left her lane. You can't leave that sprinter's lane. She went above the red line in the final sprint. A little wobble right there. So she initially crossed the line second. The commissaires, though, decided that uh, that was not what she was allowed to do, and they have bumped her down. The Canadian coaches protested, but to no avail. And so the podium that you saw, Lessa Katrina Propster wins gold. Martha Bayona, her second silver medal of this competition. And Great Britain's Katie Marchant bumped up into the bronze medal position. And now we get to hear from our Kieran winner. Here with Alyssa Propster from Germany, our women's Kieran winner. Second place to Canada in the semifinal. Did you change anything going into the final to beat them? No, I changed nothing. Um, it was always full gas and nothing else. So yeah, it was perfect. It works good and yeah. In the final, you made a very long attack from maybe two laps out. Uh, was that your plan? Is that how you like to win the Kieran? Yeah, it was a little bit my plan, but in the end, you can uh, or can't plan something. So, yeah. Congratulations. <laughs> there you have our gold medal winner, second in the semifinal. Not much changed from her tactics and. And she just says, full gas all the way. And she, she led pretty much. It was a long, long sprint, as we heard in the interview. And she just had that daylight. She saw the finish line and just wanted to get there before everyone else did. The medal ceremony for the Tissot UCI Track Cup Milton Men's Sprint. La cérémonie de remise des médailles de la Coupe des Nations Pistisso UCI de Milton, vitesse individuelle homme. The medals and gifts will be presented by. Les médailles et cadeaux seront présentés par le maire de Milton, the mayor of Milton, Gordon Krantz. Winner of the bronze medal representing Australia. Médaille de bronze représentant l'Australie, Matthew Richardson. Winner of the silver medal, representing Poland. Médaille d'argent, représentant la Pologne, Mateusz Rudzik. T. 
Tiso UCI Track Nations Cup Men's Sprint Gold Medalist, representing Trinidad and Tobago. Le médaille d'or vitesse individuelle homme de la Coupe des Nations Piste UCI Tiso, représentant Trinidad et Tobago, Nicholas Paul. Paul completing the final international event right before World Championships atop the podium, flanked by Mateusz Rudik and Matthew Richardson, who finishes with three medals in this weekend, two of them gold and this one bronze. And some of those guys who didn't compete this weekend will be looking to get ahead of Paul in a few months' time. And now we get to hear from the sprint winner. Here with Nicholas Paul, you qualified first today, fastest qualifier. Did you know then that you would have a good result today after your qualifying round? Well, I mean, qualifying is a major part of sprinting, so I know I had the speed, so it's just to go into racing and execute. What does it mean to stand on the podium with much bigger programs as a small nation representing Trinidad and Tobago? Well, I mean, coming from Trinidad and Tobago, it's always a pleasure to be able to rep the red, white, and black and to race against the big nations, so I'm really happy. Did you change anything into the final or just stuck to your plan? Always coming from second position for you. Um, not really. I mean, the tactics changed, so I just went full gas all the time and it worked. Congratulations. Thank you. A sense of theme. Two straight sprinters saying, I just went full gas the entire way. You know, it is a, a term we hear a lot in cycling, particularly in sprinting, and so it's simple enough. Sprint harder than everyone else. Be faster than everyone else and you will come out on top. Here's our Omnium winner, Katie Archibald, as she has done many, many times before, coming to stand atop the podium. A very happy Nicholas Paul. <laughs> he goes into World Championships on high. Showing off the gold medal there is Richardson. The medal ceremony for the TSO UCI Track Nations Cup Milton Women's Omnium. La cérémonie de remise des médailles de la Coupe des Nations Pistiso UCI de Milton Omnium Femme. The medals and gifts will be presented by Les médailles et cadeaux seront présentés par le maire de Milton, Mayor of Milton, Gordon Krantz. Winner of the bronze medal representing the USA, médaille de bronze représentant les États-Unis, Jennifer Valente. Congratulations. Thank you. Winner of the silver medal, representing Italy. Medaille d'argent, representant l'Italie, Alisa Balsamo. UCI Track Nations Cup Milton Omnium gold medalist 
representing Great Britain, la médaille d'or Omnium Femme de la Coupe des Nations Peace ici UCI et Tissot, représentant la Grande Bretagne, Katie Archibald. Absolutely world-class podium in the women's omnium. Archibald Balsamo Valente. You've got European champion flanked on one side by the reigning world champion. And then on the other side, a former road world champion. The omnium this summer at the world championship is going to be pretty special. Now we get to hear once again from Katie Archibald. Katie, you had a comfortable lead heading into the points event, the final of the Omnium. Does that change the way you race? Do you race more conservative or still race the same? Uh, it's the opposite. Go in more aggressive. It's, uh, if, if you have a lead, you can try and, I guess, break people early doors, which is always a bit scary because I don't think I've got the best poker face. Um, but if you're willing to try hard, it, it doesn't really matter. Did you feel the pressure of the European champion's jersey racing here in North America? Um, I suppose so. Uh, it's always a privilege to, to race the Nations Cup and to be against the, the best riders in the world and the, the people that, that I look up to, that I aspire to be like, and that I'm, you know, contending to, to race shoulder to shoulder with. So, yeah, I'm really pleased. Now that the TSO UCI Track Nations Cup is ending, how do you continue this momentum for the rest of the season? Yeah, well, it's a big question because the, the peak of that season comes in August. The World Championships are in my hometown in Glasgow, so it's quite a lot of pressure, but also quite a lot of excitement. Congratulations. Thank you. There's an, there's an event to highlight at August World Championships. It's any event Katie Archibald takes part in at home. She moved up to Glasgow. And she calls it her home now. And she will be wanting to put on a performance for her home fans victorious once again. And we are wrapping things up from here in Milton. Four days of intense action. Everybody's going to go home tired but with a smile on their face because that was an absolute blast on behalf of the crew here. My name is Gavin Day. I also enjoyed my time here. Until next time, goodbye.